Good evening, good morning, wherever you may be around the globe in the chat room. On the other side, on another planet, this is Late Night in the Midlands, and I am Michael Vera. I am your ho, ho, ho host, folks. Uh, Christmas right around the corner. Uh, My stepson told me I had to do that, so I did it. (laughs) Anyways, folks, I welcome you all wherever it is you may be around the globe. Uh, This broadcast is coming at you live from the east coast of the United States, the capital city, Columbia, South Carolina. And we've got a pretty good show tonight, I think. And uh, I'm usually right when I say this. I I know I say it almost every night, don't I? Um. We have Misha Johnston joining us. Uh, She founded the Star Family Contactee, uh, which are groups for people who are experiencers. She also had her own experiences. We're going to talk about all that and so much more with her tonight. So it should be a really good show. Um, The website, www.latenightinthemidlands.com. Go on over, become a member, be informed, and by all means, inform others. Tomorrow night, by the way, I've got Ryan Gable joining me. We're going to talk about symbolism, what it means today in our day of age, uh, Illuminati's, uh, Masons, what all that means now, um, maybe what it meant then. And uh, so we'll be discussing that tomorrow night. But tonight, uh, we'll be, uh, we'll be kind of off planet just a little bit. So, uh, I've got some news I want to get into, which I'll do in just a moment. Uh, we'll take calls later. If anybody wants to call in, uh, you can do that. The number's on our website. Uh, you can also private message me in the chat room over at late night in the midlands.com. One rule, though, it, it must be show-related. You know, question, I can't ha- hold a conversation with anybody in there. I've heard hosts who do that. And those shows, I don't keep them on very long because they get very annoying, very boring. Uh, so uh, I can't read paragraph after paragraph. So short and sweet questions. You could private message me those in our chat room at late night in the midlands.com. The other way is there's an email that I keep an eye on during the show. Um, well, later, I don't have it up all the time, but it's, but it will be. And it's late night in the midlands at yahoo.com. Now I see that one during the show, uh, just because it, it's the most convenient email for that. Otherwise I wouldn't even bother with Yahoo, but, uh, for that computer, it just, kind of works out so uh, that's what we do uh now with that being said uh yes there is a little bit of news uh and discovery i guess to talk about uh chinese residents are buying fresh air from canada we've talked about this before but i mean are you kidding me (laughs) buying fresh air from canada um because they're basically suffocating from the pollution in china I just, I don't know how all this works, but uh, it's no secret that China's smog problem has become a devastating issue, not only uh, for residents who are wearing, have to wear face masks and heed warnings to stay indoors, but uh, parts of the country have recently exceeded the World Health Organization's daily smog particulate maximum by an uh, unflavable, they say, 50 times. Uh, so not good. So Canada, uh, somebody in Canada, a company in Canada, has gone up to the mountains. They've bottled there, <laughs> doing it through some kind of compression. <laughs> I have to laugh because, my God, this is how people get rich. It's like the person who created the pet rock. So they're going up and getting this air, putting it in a can, and apparently you're getting fresh mountain air. So you could uh, open up a can of, well, not whip ass, but fresh Canada mountain air. Uh, That's linked up over on News and Discovery on LateNightInTheMidlands.com. It's just amazing to me. It it is. um, China has actually bought tons of this stuff from them already. (sighs) Remember Spaceballs? Remember that movie? Well, here it is. And, uh, once again, something in the movies. 
uh, becomes our reality. Yale students, folks, folks, listen to me. If you're paying any kind of tuition for your child at Yale, take them out, bring them home, save yourself some money. Just just do that. Save yourself the dollars, all right? Yale students signed petition to repeal the First Amendment. <clears throat> you know, the one that gives you free speech, uh, gives us the right to ask questions and all that good stuff. Yeah, they, they, they want it repealed. <sighs> Looking to understand just how controversial the debate over free speech on our college campus really is. This is what they're saying. I'm, I'm kind of giving this to you from the filmmaker. Uh, his name is Satarist Ami Horowitz. Recently, he traveled to Yale University, one of our nation's most prestigious institutions of higher learning. You could have fooled me, Yale. Uh, Anyways, um, to speak directly to the students, this guy goes and he decided to take his campus free speech debate to its logical conclusion, said Horowitz, who asked students if they'd sign a petition calling for an outright repeal of the First Amendment. The result was this unbelievable display of total stupidity. In fact, Horowitz discovered a solid majority of the students asked willingly, signed the petition with several expressing their enthusiastic approval for his anti-First Amendment efforts. These, these are a bunch of morons. So these are the people who are going to be coming out of these colleges and running our world. Dummies, absolute dummies. They want to do away with the First Amendment. Uh, don't they know that that would also go against the petition they signed? You know, they wouldn't have a right to do that. <laughs> this is how stupid they are. Folks, this is what we're dealing with. This is why I have to be here every night. No matter what we're talking about, we always get something important in or out every night. And we have to because there's... Folks, there's Yale students among us. There are Yale students amongst us. This is this could very well be part of the zombie apocalypse. They're all coming out of the colleges. They've been brainwashed by their professors and their their books, and and now they're co- I'm just unbelievable. They would do away. I these oh, man, oh man, oh man. Meanwhile, in Texas, uh, Texas Texas explores flexing legal muscles on immigration. Uh, Crafted carefully, state laws can be written that would allow Texas to crack down on undocumented immigrants and illegal border crossers without running afoul of the U.S. Constitution, a state attorney told lawmakers recently. So, uh... Just as I've said, just as many have said, it is legal. It's not unconstitutional, even though people want to argue that it is. You come over here illegally, you're breaking the law, you need to go back home wherever that is. It's that simple. You don't belong here. You know, if people, if if any of you think that the laws are too strict and that, uh, you know, uh, the waiting lines for people who actually try to do it legally... And I know people who have done it legally, and they don't like the idea that people are coming in illegally when they did it legally, um, and I don't blame them. But if you think that the, the wait's too long or this or that, well, then you know what? You've got to work at changing those laws somehow, right? Uh, you can't break them. Laws are laws. Just like if you're in a state that hasn't wisened up and, and legalized marijuana yet, Every time you go get it, you know, you know, it's against the law there. If they catch you, you're going to be in trouble, right? But it's okay for people to cross the border, have babies, and call themselves Americans. 
A Russian general says that new weapons will neutralize the United States missile defenses. This came out of uh, Moscow. It says uh, Russia's strategic nuclear forces chief says its new weapons will be capable of neutralizing any potential missile defenses. This is Colonel General Sergei Karyagvav. <laughs> The Strategic Missile Forces commander said Wednesday in remarks carried by a Russian news agency that the nation's military planners have taken into account the emerging potential of NATO's U.S.-led missile defenses. And they say that they're ready and that they can handle it. And, uh, you know, Obama's just giving everything away anyways. He's like, uh, he's like a welfare line over there, uh, Obama is. Anyways, we're going to take a break here. When we come back, I will have my guest with me. And uh, I'm looking forward to speaking with her tonight. So, uh, And by the way, we have our guests linked up on the homepage at LateNightInTheMidlands.com. So you can go over there and, uh, and click on the picture, on the picture slider. And that will take you over to her website. So with that, folks, this is Late Night in the Midlands. I'm Michael Vera. We'll be back in just a few minutes. This is Dick Farrell here to tell you about OxySilver. Legally available only through CureShop.com and HealthyWorldStore.com. Don't be fooled buying silver products from copycats and criminals. You've heard Dr. Leonard Horowitz and experts urge you to avoid deadly vaccinations and illegal operators selling stolen OxySilver and OxySilver copycats. You've heard experts tell you about suppression in alternative medicine and confusing propaganda in healthcare and the truth movement. Read Dr. Horowitz's book, Healing Celebrations, to learn how miracle healings can be made to happen through faith, prayer, and a pure diet. Get great immunity using vitamin C, D, and oxy silver, liquid dentist, GI Flora Pro, a top shelf probiotic. Use Green Harvest as a great tasting meal substitute for energizing organic nutrients and losing weight. And Zeola, a natural clays for detoxifying your body. More advice, all these products and more are available from thecureshop.com including Oxy Silver, the world's most powerful silver hydrosol. Electro energized to put risky injections, toxic antibiotics, and deadly drug pushers out of business. Oxy Silver is covalently bonded to water. Unlike any other silver product using the frequency of chlorophyll 528, what Dr. Horowitz explains is pure tone love, the universal healer. NASA originally developed covalently body silver hydrosols to keep astronauts healthy in space. Dr. Horowitz added the 528 frequency to NASA's formula and more. Oxy Silver works three ways to electrocute dangerous germs better than anything, far better than all leading silver products and without any risk. Oxy Silver oxygenates and resonates with 528 for faster healing. So help save lives putting drug lords and criminals out of business and keep the LNM network broadcasting. Register for our free cooperative at healthworldaffiliates.com forward slash 4948. That's healthyworldaffiliates.com forward slash 4948. And buy Oxy Silver and other great products in package specials at great discounts from the cureshop.com buy oxy silver gi flora pro green harvest zeolove and love minerals at great discounts at cureshop.com that's cureshop.com with two p's c-u-r-e-s-h-o-p-p-e.com or call toll free at 1-888-621-7611 that's 1-888-621-7611 do it now lnm fans and late nighters around the world have you captured something on that photo or video of yours 
Send in your photos and videos of ghosts, orbs, UFOs, Planet X, or just about anything content related by submitting them to the Late Night in the Midlands Facebook group or fan page, or you can submit them on Twitter using hashtag LNM Radio. And if you would rather stay anonymous, then email them to us at mv at late night in the midlands.com. We will share them at our new fan page on the LNM website and may even ask you to come on air a few minutes and tell us about your photo or video. Late Night in the Midlands, we're building a bridge to the truth and beyond. Share our content and use the hashtag LNM Radio for your chance to win a free subscription. Those who use it at least 10 times a month will find themselves entered into a drawing every month to win a free two-month subscription from Late Night in the Midlands. So spread our news, spread our website, and use hashtag LNM Radio. The LNM Radio Network offers a moderated chat room at www.latenightinthemidlands.com. Just click the chat and listen page from the drop down menu at the top of any page on the website, or click the listen live button at the top of the home page at www.latenightinthemidlands.com. Is there proof of God's existence in our government's records? Author Jose Calazo brings his years of research into this stunning question to light with his new book. Discover how new and experimental technologies may change our world forever and uncover monumental proof and answers to mankind's greatest questions in God Does Exist. No more nuclear testing and more. You could find Jose Calazo's book, America's New Slavery, on Amazon.com. In many cases is the idea that the aliens are essentially trying to create a hybrid mix of themselves and ourselves. Small, they're interested in our DNA, our genetic makeup, bodies. and beyond that, they're interested in our personalities, the larger, uh, our and the affection for our children, our love for one another, a whole kind of range of um, they were what we think of almost the most human they characteristics not, we have not emotionally. Earth. Uh, we have to face up to reality that. For example, the UFO phenomenon is a real phenomenon, no question about it. Uh, so anybody who debunks the UFO phenomenon itself uh, don't know what he or she's talking about. Hey, Michael, I promised you I'd call in for a little bit, and here I am. <laughs> I know that I bashed Bush the entire time. I wouldn't even allow him coast to coast there for a while because I was told not to talk about Bush. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. If you're listening to this, you are the resistance. Late night in the Midlands, we cover everything. Become a late nighter without the late nights. And subscribe now to help Late Night in the Midlands bring you the best guests with the best information. Hey, late nighters. I have a secret I want to share with you. What if I told you there's a way to hear some of our show content free on YouTube? Well, it just so happens there's a guy who is honest and supports Late Night in the Midlands big time. And he owns a YouTube channel I highly recommend. Non-Human Entities. Yes, Non-Human Entities. And if you do not have a pencil handy... No sweat. You can just click one of the many banners on our website. Non-Human Entities. That's Non-Human Entities. Again, just look for them on YouTube or click the banner on LateNightInTheMidlands.com for Non-Human Entities. On the east coast of the United States, from the capital city, Columbia, South Carolina, you're listening to Late Night in the Midlands with your host, Michael Vera. To talk to Michael Vera, Dial 803-392-4566 or around the world on Skype. Just use Skype ID LNM Radio. Oh, I know some people who like to take the money and run. Oh, do I ever. This is Late Night in the Midlands and I am Michael Vera. We've got a good show uh, lined up here tonight. So, um... I'm looking forward to getting into it. So what I'm going to do here is give you a little bit of background on my guest tonight. And, uh, of course, I'll let her 
uh, fill in the blanks. And I think she's going to have a pretty detailed um, story to tell us tonight. So uh, we'll get right to it. The website is latenightinthemidlands.com. You know the routine. Become a member. That means becoming a late-nighter. It helps us. We help you. Um, Be informed. You can be informed without being a member. All you've got to do is listen to the many shows we have here. Of course, I'm pulling on my for my own because it's my show. But we've got other shows here uh, that that really educate. So uh, it's a good idea to tune in when you can, and then inform others. That's right. Inform others, and when you when you just can't get through to the Rockhead, just give them the website and say, "Look, just listen. Just listen at 9 p.m." Tune in or tune in at 7 p.m. when Ira's on or when uh, Ryan's on or whoever. Just just tune in. You might want to take it lightly. You might want to get something around the 3, 4 o'clock in the morning area down there and start light and then work your way up to this to the live shows that are really going to, you know, spin these things around. All right, so <laughs> with that, uh, let me tell you a little bit about my guests. And it's quite a bio, too, so I'm just going to give you the gist here. Uh, Misha Johnston, uh, she founded the Star Family Contactee. Uh, these are groups for people who are experiencers, men, women, teens, children who are contactee experiencer, abducted by ETs. Uh, she started the first teen and children's groups in the United States in 1994. She's been on, uh, Tons of shows, including Art Bell's Dreamland. That's a an older one. And uh, she's had her own experiences. She's, uh, I mean, God, there's so much here, folks. There really is. It would take me probably 30 minutes just to get through this. And that's assuming I don't slip up here and there. So why don't we just go ahead and tell you about Amisha Johnson, who has had 16 experiencer support groups. She uh, facilitates each month, and uh, we're going to bring her on. Her website is www.starseedawakening.org. It is linked up on our homepage. And uh, let's see here. All right. So I think, yeah, we, we got her. We'll connect right now. All right, and here we go. Hello? Uh, good evening, Misha. This is Michael Vera with Late Night New Good Midland. evening. How are you doing, Michael? I am doing just fine, and how are you? Hello? Great, thank you. Oh, okay, great. Um, if if by chance you have the show on in the background, you might. I want... turned it off. Oh, okay, because yeah, <laughs> it'll confuse you. <laughs> but uh, but hey, I welcome you to the show. I'm looking forward to talking with you. Um, I I would love to start with some background. You've got quite the bio. Well, yes, right. Um, well, I guess we can start on the things I I I do uh, right now. Yeah, okay. sure. Okay. okay. All right. Well, I facilitate support groups for people uh, here in Las Vegas, Nevada, where I live. And I do two of those a week in my home. I also, that is through, uh, people can contact if they're local, through uh, Starseed Awakening and Psychic Awareness Group on Meetup. And then I also have um, groups through the Internet. Uh, right now, I with the holidays and stuff. I'm uh, down to I have two a week, and um, one is at the uh, Starseed Experiencer uh, Contact Group, and this is for people who've had the contact. It's a private pl- group, so uh, people need to be an experiencer or have talked to me, and um, they're welcome to join it. Then I send them a link to it. We have it at Zoom or Google Hangout. I kind of go between the two of those. Um, also, I have an MK Ultra, My Lab, um, Monarch, uh, Super Soldier, Target Individual Ritual Abuse Support Group is what it's called. They can go, find that on Facebook as well. And, and as I said, it's uh, MK Ultra, DID, My Lab, Monarch, Super Soldier, um, and Target and Ritual Abuse Super uh, Support Groups. And I have that group uh, every Thursday at 
1 to 4 o'clock, and then I have the experiencer group on Sundays from 11.30 to 3 o'clock. And then I also have groups in between um, for other things, but they kind of are, are different times. Um, let's see. I also have a radio show on uh, KCO, KCOR Digital Radio, and that's Starseed Awakening. So if people want to tune in sometime for me. Right. And so I'm just kind of busy. Yeah, <laughs> you've, got, <laughs> you've got a lot on your plate there. <laughs> I do, I do. I, and then once a year I, I do a uh, art exhibit for the people in my support group. They're, they've had either they've drawn it or they've had artists draw and I have it here at uh, the libraries and so that's uh, like a 50, 54 art exhibit 54 pieces in the art exhibit that we that we do once a year too nice nice so so what what led you down this road what what got your interest into all these fields well when I started waking up in 1989 I started having flashes uh, that that just came back and some of them came back in dreams some of them just day daytime I'd be flashing I, I had so many missing times in my life in fact basically I don't remember my childhood uh, other than just some marker memories and um, I have done a lot of, of therapy throughout my entire life because of my PTSD that I had and was diagnosed with and so uh, I've uh, done a lot of regressions to get the pieces of these flashes and to get more information about them um, without the conscious mind, you know, getting in there and everything. So um, I, as I started kind of very first would be like three years old was my first ET contact. And that was with what uh, I called them BGs, but they were little bear-like guys. But when I saw the Star Wars pictures and saw the Ewoks, I got to say, that's the closest thing I've ever seen to them. Wow. So I think that, that Steven Spielberg knows something as well about that species. Uh, and they were a lovable group. They were really sweet. And um, they used to, as a child at three years old, I knew I could fly because I had been taken up in the, uh, up above as I was basically going up to the ship, but you know, just um, flying, you know, levitating. And, and so I knew I could fly because I'd fly and seen the tops of the buildings. And I used to tell my brothers and sisters that, and they never believed me. <laughs> um, but um, so at that same time, that was happening. Um, and I'm still working on the exact time this happened, but somewhere in the three-year-old age, the memories started coming back with, um, I'm from a, a family of... Um, MK Ultra. Um, my father was MK Ultra. He was uh, in a um, secret program. Uh, one of the secret programs. He was uh, uh, actually a, a magician. Uh, I believe a black magician. I can't tell you one hundred percent for sure, but I know because of the things that he did and and worked in. I um, I, I believe it was a black magician because uh, one day he came home to my mom and said that. You cannot believe all the things that I can do," um, he said, and that there are so many things that you would never know that exist that are there that you can be done. And with that, he put a cup on the middle of the table and moved it with his mind. So he was in um, what they call the Rosicrucian, but it's not the oh, you know, the, the Rosicrucians has a lot of levels and layers, just like the Masons do. So. Um, I believe uh, it probably was just a sect from them, and it probably had to do with his mind control because he um, used to talk about his childhood being beaten all the time, and he that's all he thought it was, but I'm sure that he was also mind control because he ended up being my handler and started um, trauma-based mind control on me at age three. I started to remember that, and... You know, being taken to the ritual ceremonies and things like that, I remember. Really? And um, you start to say something? Oh, I say really. I say so. Yeah. Oh, now, uh, what what was his reasoning for doing, I mean, like... He's mind-controlled. When you're uh -huh. mind-controlled and you're in a mind-controlled family, it's it perpetrates it just keeps going on and um, until you stop it. And 
fortunately I was able to stop it but I know that he had had it and uh, he did it to me and possibly two of my other siblings because they never would say what happened but they but they would um, see he was also a, a magician he was a show mu magician and he would go uh, around to uh, events and, and do shows um, he took my uh, three siblings on the road with him I was like too young at that time three or four years old so he didn't take my brother and myself but he took them and things happened on the road no one ever talked about because as soon as they got old enough one ran away at, at 13 years old and the other ran away at 16 while they were out on the road so they got out of there as fast as they could um, they never ever talked to my father and in fact um, in, during his funeral they never even showed up for his funeral but they never would say anything other than my sister gave me a book about abuse and torture hmm. sexual abuse and torture so I, my father was a handler and I have no um, anger for him because he was also a victim you know when you're in a mind control situation you don't even remember what's going on uh, and you you know you can have blanks in your and your and your mind of um, not just days months but we're talking years at a time they are they are so apt at doing this um mind control they're so very good at it and um and, and let me let me ask this because i'm just trying to understand it more like so when you say mind control i mean what was the overall agenda what was he trying what was he trying to set you up for or or what did they set him up for i mean what were they trying to, like, I always say the mainstream media is kind of like a mind control, but, you know, is it right. that type of mind control, or is it, I mean... Mm, no, much more severe. Uh, actually, ritual abuse is part of a mind control scenario that is done, and my father would pass me on, or take me over to, uh, I guess you'd call it a pedophilia uh, ritual abuse, and uh, they, it was actually a tunnel that was used that would go to this very large house just about well it was just kitty corner from us and it was always vacant because everybody said it was haunted but it is where all of the those ceremonies took place and some of them were done by the deacons of the church and so um, there's all there's that and then also um, my my father and mother um, had T ten children and you know that that's such a long story in itself but let me just say that four of them died or three of them really died of very strange things not living past a year or a year and a half died of very strange things that shouldn't have happened um, uh, a pneumonia uh, carbon monoxide poisoning uh, just some really uh, uh, being hit on the back of a head by supposedly by a try another child and and uh, and um, so, what I was told by my father on, on his death be deathbed was that he had to hand one of them over. It was supposed to be the very last child to be handed over to um, the government, basically, to the, that not the government, but factions of the government that are involved in this mind control and MK Ultra. And he said that your mother could not handle her losing any more children they, she couldn't have him take any more children away from her in his exact words um, so I know that my father probably tried not to do what he had to do but it was either that or they would just pick off the kids one by one so uh, he finally uh, turned me over and from then my training into trauma based mind control and then I was trained evidently, uh, and it, it's all about you know pedophilia and and things like that. Um, and I was uh, put into service at age nine, and then uh, throughout my life, um, you know, I've had. Uh, I mean, I never met, remembered any of my childhood. Just it's just little tiny, tiny pieces of it. Um, have you ever tried some type of regression or oh yes that's how i found out about oh. it is that uh, the tiny pieces have whole stories behind them so in a regression i found out the, what happened 
and that's when I found out how um, you know that it had been started at, at that age and throughout my whole life and I don't even remember graduating from high school I don't remember going to school I don't remember I remember my first grade one one day in my first grade and that's you know it and so I've done a lot of regression and from the regression I found out about the blank spots within the um, childhood and the and the MK ultra and trauma based mind control also I had memories of the ETs who were there now to me my, Michael my ET experiences were what kept kept me alive and feeling like I was loved because when my my BGs would come they brought me happiness uh, I also had a tall willowy one I called him the tall willowy one who was kind of a, a a tall white gray and um, and he was very he he was kind to me he never ever hurt me and and it seemed like those are my fondest memories growing up was my contact with the ETs. See, and, and I could see that where that would be. I've I've not had contact with extraterrestrials that I know of, but I have seen ships in the sky. I mean, I've I've witnessed it, and it's amazing. And so, so how many different ETs have you met? You mentioned the furry ones, and I I kind of wonder. I've always speculated that maybe that's what Bigfoot's been all these years is. You know. Right. Well, it very well could be because I lived in Idaho. It's kind of Bigfoot country. So uh, the the little Bee Gees may have been baby Bigfoots. You know, I kind of wondered if they were. Because that's kind of how it works. I'll tell you because um, when ET, the different ET groups will do this, and this is things I found out within my groups and talking to people and, and all my own research with uh, people with, uh, that – yeah, you have your like your gray groups. Um, you have a um, an older group that, and it's still they're probably I don't know. Let's just say a number, three hundred years old. Okay, but they cannot really survive in our climate and our air. So they will send the teenagers, and the teenagers are the ones that do a lot of the uh, let's call abductions or experiences. Now, in some cases, the teenage grays are not quite as kind and, and, comf and you know, comforting and things like that. But if you take it as a teenager, how would, how would a teenager act if they went, oh, okay, i got to go abduct these people and oh, I'm not really happy about this, you know. <laughs> so I kind of feel that it, it makes so much sense that they're the teenagers do the abduction. And the little grays, the young ones... Um, who still are probably, you know, 80 years old or something, but still considered the children are the ones that like to do the and have the communication and the contact with the children. Uh -huh. So, like, for instance, my children used to have visits all the time from different ETs, and they would um, show them how to uh, uh, levitate something, or they would be playing with my kids' toys in in their room, uh, you know, tele uh, you know, telepathically um, and uh, so that just kind of made me understand that so the Bee Gees perhaps that's a baby Bigfoot you know yeah maybe and and you said you were three when this started I was you three years three. old I mean, you know I'm that's what I uh, that's what came out in, in the regression that I was three I just remember I was a little gal who was the same size as they were Sure. So they were not uh, scary or anything, and they had. I have a picture on my website. In fact, starseedawakening.org, If they go to it, they can kind of follow along with some of the, because uh, I have my experiences on there, a few of my stories, and they can follow along with the pictures, so they can see who they are. But I think they look more like a walk than the picture I originally have have there. Okay. Okay, so then the next one was, like I said, the white willowy one, a tall gray. And that one took me through all through my life, all the way through to my hybrid, the hybrid program that I was part of. Um, then I um, met a um, reptilian species. Actually, I've met many, several reptilian types and a couple of different types of uh, tall grays. But uh, the 
first reptilian I met was uh, at age 16, and it was just an instant look at this reptilian. I knew I recognized the energy, and um, in fact, I even was laying there on this, um, let's say, in a bed, even though I couldn't really feel it, um, and, and I asked him, I, I said, I know you, I know you, and they came out of the shadows, because there was three of them, came out of the shadows, and he, he, he dropped his cloak, and there he was, it was a reptilian, and I didn't get into fear, I had this familiar feeling, so I, I know, I don't know, I know him from another planet, let's put it this way, I found that out through regression, that I've had some lives on other planets, and I, I knew him then, so, um, he came back to me later in uh, 1989 when I was having a, a lot of uh, abductions by uh, my lab, being my lab, which is military reabduction. So uh, throughout this time, throughout my whole life, I've had ET experience. Well, the factions of um, the black ops, you know, they're very interested in what's going on on the ships. They want to know the propulsion. They want to know uh, how the ships work, how even the... the, the uh, the whole panels, and you know, they they ask us questions about how the panels work. Um, they ask us questions about what we see on board, um, and so they will actually take us after we have been dropped dropped off by an ET. And sometimes it's that same night. Sometimes it's a few nights later, and then we're taken by uh, factions of our human government, you know, black ops, I call them, mm -hmm. um, and then they interrogate us, and sometimes they do hypnosis, sometimes they do a lot more than interrogation, they used to do some torture, because I, uh, I was programmed from the very beginning with torture, and so of course that, that's one of their ways to get at the other altars, because dissociation DID, which is dissociated disorder, is caused by splitting of your personalities because of trauma. Mm -hmm. My trauma started when I was a child, so so did my DID. My first DID I recognized through therapy and everything was my three-year-old uh, during the um, ritualistic uh, abuse scenarios and the pedophile scenarios and um, so anyway so uh, let me see I don't want to jump around because I'm already doing it it's really hard because I have a, a, a oh, big story and if I went verbatim it would be five hours so I do jump around a bit. <laughs> that's quite all right because you know what I am a jump around kind of host I like that I don't mind that at all <laughs> oh good I just hope you're following me okay I certainly am you've got my right. attention <laughs> okay, so um, anyway, so then going back to my teen years, um, I um, had experiences, and then um, at in 1968, I was at a college in a cafeteria, and someone walked up to me and said, hey, you guys, you want to be in a sleep program because you make money, and it's really simple. All you have to do is just sleep, and we just kind of program your, we just look at your dreams and things. So I thought, okay. So I, last thing I remembered was walking into that building. And the next thing I remember is eight months later, I'm on a bus, and I look down at this ticket and go, uh, what am I doing here on this bus? I have no memory whatsoever from that January of 1968 to uh, September. And I wake up on this bus and a program is going in my head because this is something they do. They implant the programs so that you think, well, things are all normal and everything. They planted a program that I was married, and my husband decided he didn't want to be married anymore, and he put me on a bus, and he sent me back to Idaho. But when I got back to Idaho, um, my parents picked me up the bus, and they proceeded to tell me what really was the truth. Oh. In January, late January, I'd contacted them and said, I'm getting married, put a notice in the, in the newspaper, and I'm getting married to this Navy Marine corpsman, and 
I'm not going to give you his name, okay. but um, I do have that because I have the wedding license. And um, and then they said I was married on, and I think it's like February 18th or something like that. They came to the wedding and they didn't like him at all, and they didn't like the way I acted, and they kind of felt like uh, I was uh, on drugs or my dad probably knew I was mind control, but maybe not. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But he was very angry because by then my dad was trying to break away from the, the mind control. And I believe he was working really hard at getting away from it. So he was very upset and wouldn't take walk me down the aisle. So I, I proceeded to get married in a wedding dress <clears throat> in a church. And I have no memory whatsoever of it. It really drag. It's really a drag because it's the only wedding I've had that I was in a, <laughs> in a church, and I don't even have a memory of it. Oh. So I guess I even had a um, a reception afterwards in in the in the basement of the church, and then um, the very next morning he took me off to Seattle, and that was the last time they saw him, me until I called him from the bus station. Incredible. And I had no memory whatsoever. The only memories I had was the program memories that were put in, which was the one I was supposedly married. Another one was that I worked with another group of people, and we rode a bus to big houses, and we cleaned them. Okay, but what the actual memory of that, real, the real truth of it is... Um, because I would, I would remember it was at night, and you don't clean houses at night. It was at night. Uh, we'd pull up to this gate, and I'd see these big high gates, and 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 then I'd see this mansion, and all these lights on in the mansion. So now I knew it was day. It's nighttime, right? So there's a mansion, and we're not going through the front door. We're taken around to the back. Now the people that are on the bus are young women like myself, seventeen, eighteen. Um, 19 and then young boys 11 12 13 which I would definitely say have to be the monarch and Montauk boys so the Montauk boys and we were the monarch girls and we were taken around the back and walked up the back stairs and we were uh, the party favors for the dignitaries and the politicians and the Hollywood big shots and everything like that which is, uh, you know, we were in the sex um, slave programs. And, uh, in mm-hmm. fact, uh, when I saw Eyes Wide Shut, mm-hmm. it was very, very hard because when I first saw that, I, I absolutely freaked out because I'm telling you, that show has got it right. <clears throat> they do have masks on. The only thing is, in the show, they use prostitutes, but that's not what they use. They use kidnapped people. And, 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 and let me let me ask you this, uh, based on your opinion, and we'll go back to, to the story, but uh, experience or opinion, either or, but who's, who's really in control of all this? Is this the ETs, or is this the government, or is it both? Both. It is both. Both because I was also taken in a ritual ceremony where I saw... Uh, I, I saw uh, people in robes, purple robes. I saw military uniform. Uh, like I, there was this, we were underground, or I don't know where we were, to tell you the truth. I just know that there was this stage-like thing above us. There was a military brass-looking person, um, blue uniform. Um, there was, uh, and then there was a, there was a reptilian standing beside him. And then there were beings. I don't. I can't tell you. They were in robes, so I can't tell you what they were. But that was a ritual ceremony, and um, I'm not really going into any kind of the what happened in those. But they're suffice to say, they're they're pretty awful, and things that happen in them are unbelievable. So, um, but they are both government, uh, business, and and different types of ETs. There's, there's reptilians I've I've seen there, and I've also seen, um, well, no, not not in those. Never, never any other species. That's the only species I saw during the ritual ceremonies. In the underground bases, I did, however, see some mantis, some tall greys, short greys, reptilians. So, so you you've actually been in the underground bases? Yes, I have. They've they've taken you there. Yes, they have. Yes, oh, they have. Oh, 
Okay. Um, and, and what what I mean are there various ETs working together, or you know because you mentioned reptilians and I'm I've always they always get a bad rap. But they do, and there's just like there is in everything, even human race. There's good and there's bad, you know. So, uh, the ones, in my opinion, that are working with the underground base are service to self. I'm not going to say they're all bad. I'm going to say they're service to self. Um, <clears throat> the other reptilian that ended up uh, coming into my life in '89 was service to others because he was actually basically sent to protect me from those other reptilians and the ETs that would come and get me and take me to the underground bases. <clears throat> Sometimes he would <clears throat> be here and he would make me leave. Uh, but, um, and, then, and then I also, he rescued me one time from an underground base with, with, with I don't know what would have happened to me. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, he, you know, being a reptilian can definitely look like the other reptilians and um, they uh, they he walked up well I'll just tell you it was a very weird one I was in a ritual ceremony I was in a white dress um, uh, I was in a line and I know that there had been other people in front of me that had already been sacrificed I, I did find this out that is not a memory I found that out in, re in my uh, uh, regression but <clears throat> I just remembered being in, in the, c the ceremony. And uh, all of a sudden, um, there's, there was reptilian around. Um, and a reptilian walked up. And don't know if it's telepathic communication with the others, because I don't know. Mm -hmm. Because I was groggy and, and you know, a, zo a zombie, basically. Probably next to be sacrificed I don't know because others people had been and he took me by the arm and walked me away now how I, I surmised from his telepathic message because the messages come in way in forms of like uh, pictures and whole whole sentences at a time so what was happening was he was rescued man and, and he immediately telepathically said to me we must hurry we went down some catacombs, and all of a sudden, a wall just opened up in in this cave, and it just opened up, and we walked through it and to safety. So, that, I have a very fond feeling of for Ayano. In fact, he I, he allowed me to call him Ayano. That's not his name, but I couldn't pronounce his name. It's extremely hard. Oh yeah, I'm a master of screwing <laughs> names up, so I understand. Well, that. theirs have a lot of. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you can't really say them unless uh, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So 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 what's what's going on? I mean, how long have they been below ground? I mean, has this been something that's been going on ever since we've been here? Or. Oh, I would imagine yes, probably. Well, you know, at least since uh, um, the 40s, may maybe be before that, um, I'm, I'm sure that Hitler, of course, you know, he was like, uh, had his his uh, thing in the Antarctic. That was underground. There's all kinds of different stories about underground. And, and the, the whole thing is these, these reptilians were there before, I believe. They were there underground before the humans started coming in. So, of course, they think it's their, basically, their territory. In fact, they think their whole world basically is there. I'm going by what one of them said to me. Um, I, it was a, a, a very interesting night. I was walking with, you know, in a zombie state, basically, but you just, you know, you just walk where you're supposed to walk. I was next to a reptilian. I could see his feet because my head was down. And I looked up and I would see these guys in uniform. They were in camo uniform. And they'd walk by and they'd look at me, but they would never look at him. And I thought to myself, well, I know I'm walking next to a reptilian because I see his feet, but why don't they ever look at him? And this really curt uh, message came to me that they know better, they must respect, they must honor. Um, so um, then later on that same day, and it was the same ET, the same reptilian, I was... I, I don't remember if I verbally said it or I, I 
I think I was just thinking it, but I thought, why? Why are you trying to take over our planet? Why would they want to take over our planet? You know, they got to live down in underneath the ground. Why do they want our planet? And um, that's that's and what why, I wonder. Because of yeah. all the planets that are out there, why take one that's already taken? Well, exactly. And and uh, and then I thought, why why are they trying to? Uh, uh, what is the word I used? Invade. So, why are they invading us? It sounds human. And he human. said. And he said back to me very curtly once again and said, because it's not your planet, it's ours. We were here first. Ah, okay. Now, if they were the dinosaurs, part <clears throat> part of the dinosaurs that went underground <clears throat> during the floods or the during the comet or whatever, um, and they evolved into these types of reptilians that are uh, now more, uh, have a lot more humanoid aspects to him it made sense and when i heard that and i really it was again he said that but i got this whole image i got the image that we were here first and i got an image of a raptor and then uh and then an and then an image of the underground and darkness and i realized i believe what he was saying to me was was true in his mind anyway that uh, they were here and you know we came along later after well, the, the dinosaurs. Well, you know what? What what kind of puzzles me then is why they wait until we have so much more technology before they, you know, do something about it. You would think that they'd want to get us while we were, uh, you know. I mean, I guess at one point we were playing with stones. We're told. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And but are they getting us, or is it just a cohabitation of our? Some of our military and our and our and our the bankers and everything, and they're all just working together. I don't know. That's true. And there's a question from the chat. I want to give it to you quick before okay. I lose it. Uh, the uh, question for the guest: uh, Which monarch programming did she have? Alpha, beta, uh, so on, so forth. Here, let's see: uh, Delta, Theta, Omega. Uh, I I, I believe it was Alpha, uh, Beta, um, because I, I was in. Not only a sex program, but I was also programmed in um, remote viewing. I was programmed in, um, I know it's remember memorization because when they um, took my memories away from me, you know, they compartmentalized my brain because they do that. I now have like no memory, no mem I mean, no uh, memory for names or anything like that. So I really believe, and, and I know I've seen some of the things and know uh, and remembered some of the things that I was used as as a courier. I was also used as a drug courier. I was used um, um, a lot with um, what's the word I'm trying to think of. Um, Oh, it's, you want a senator to vote the way you want them to vote? Well, you set them up with a with a sex slave and. Um, oh. and the, Bribing in a very black, bribe, yeah, yeah. blackmail, mm -hmm. Black blackmail, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's another North term for it. I can't think of what it is. <clears throat> so um, those are the kinds of things that um, I did, and I was all accessed in such ways as, um, you know, like I said, I uh, I had no memory whatsoever uh, of that wedding, and while I was um, I was on the road, uh, this is a. a um, a memory I had of waking up and hearing him and then and I got a little more detail on it but that my husband at the time I guess I was in a, a motel room and I was gr I was drugged but I woke up momentarily and I heard him saying don't you worry don't I always bring them I always bring them I, I will have her there when I'm supposed to so that was all his job he's a handler he was supposed to bring me to uh, to Seattle, where they continued the the programming and the training and all that. So then, also at age, um, well, I was in '69. I was almost 20. Um, I answered a phone, and a strange um, sound came out of it, and that was really the only thing I. That was the last thing I remember until again eight months later and that time I was in San Francisco uh, mm -hmm. once again uh, I found out that uh, I had been called 
I was told to go meet him at the rest at the big Bob's big boy. That's like the big thing I can remember. And and I was in, in Ogden, Utah at the time. Or excuse me, Salt Lake, Utah at the time. And uh I I went and met him and you know, the uh, the, the the little program that goes on in my head says a man walks up to me. I don't remember his face or anything. He says, I'm going to San Francisco. You're taking me. And I said, yes. <laughs> so I went to San Francisco. I didn't drive my car. I, I know that. But my car and, and, and I, I guess I'd already packed. I don't know. You know, I don't remember anything from the phone call in the morning. And the uh, next thing I remember is I was in San Francisco. And I found out that it was again I'll call him his name is Charlie I'll, it was again Charlie and this time in San Francisco some of the programming was to what to I guess to, to make sure that um, I could withstand pain because uh, I was on a dock or a pier and um, there was a, some kind of a bolt sticking up or something and I had my shoes off and I was told to put my foot down on the bolt and keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing and I uh, end up tearing up my foot and I, I, I to this day have a scar there from what they did and it was you know it's just to, to cement the program to make sure that um, no matter what you know it, it's the, the kind of drugs that they use and they do use hip, um, hypnotherapy mm -hmm. um, they use uh, types of drugs where you can't feel a thing and you're like a it's like a, what the root street name for it is roofies and I'm trying to think what the other name for it it's, it's like, uh, uh, I'll think of it here okay. maybe on a break or something but uh, they give those kinds of drugs where you can't even you have no memory uh, of anything it's totally amnesia and, and is that a is that a common practice like uh, like you had mentioned um you know sending uh hookers or something to somebody's uh room or whatever and then getting pictures of them and using them to blackmail because and i asked because i was just telling people in our chat room uh well i've told them in the past anyways of a story of uh just strangeness a guy who moved in next to me was only there for a few months and then disappeared but while he was there several times uh there was some some young girl would come to the door and have this wild story about how she needed diapers or this or that and could she borrow 20 bucks and hey i'll come on in or whatever so he was basically sending hookers to the door uh, and, and I always spec, I said, I wonder, you know, if, cause every time it happened, there'd be a car down, you know, it was like, uh, there was other people that lived in the complex area and there'd be a car down there facing the door. It's like, there's, it's almost like somebody's waiting to take a picture of exchange of money or something. I, I and then people say, or that's maybe paranoid. it was, she was a drug courier. It could be, mm -hmm. it could be, but it's, it happened several times and I finally moved out of there, but, uh. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, just strange stuff. People think, it, you know, it's all conspiracy theories, but that stuff really happens. That stuff really does happen. <laughs> and, yes, they want somebody to vote the way they want them to vote. Yeah. They, that It is something that's done all the time. Yeah, oh, sure, sure. Okay, so it's called ketamine, LSD. They used LSD, ketamine, psychosylvine, and um, a couple other kinds of drugs uh, on on us and you know because it works better for uh controlling and such i see yeah there's there's uh ayahuasca i know a church is some of these uh uh different kind of churches use that now did they use stuff like that it's a, it's a hallucinogenic uh oh yeah it would be well lsd yeah definitely i know they use lsd because well, I don't know that. I can't tell you that for sure. <laughs> uh, I just know with my research, that's the type of drugs that they gave us, was those kinds of things. Um, and so uh, that was in, like so like I said, 69. And so I, I finally just woke up in 1970 um, and... Mm -hmm. I was awake and had no memory whatsoever what happened in San Francisco. Um, I have little 
snippets of memory so I started going through my uh, regression to find out what was one in and I found out that that was uh, a time I was really used a lot with um, uh, with the the, the the well whether it was the beta I'm not positively sure program sure. but I also know I was at and I'm, I'm going to see if I can remember the name of it. I was at the Grove. It's called the... I never can remember the name of it. They blocked that out. The Grove. That's in San Francisco. It's the... Um, um, mm -hmm. It's gone. It's a Grove. It's the place where all the big shots go there with their ceremonies and there's ritual abuse and sure sacrifice and, you and, know which one i'm talking about right sh sh well sure and, and and you know that's something else that people think is a fairy tale uh and no. that's the sacrifices and i try to tell people that the these psychopaths who are in charge they i mean it's nothing to them no and and it's not it's more than nothing to them they use it for their to oh boy i'm getting blanks here hang on a second they use it for um well, age the, the, the I see I like youth for like the fountain youth, of youth, the youth yes. fountain of youth yeah they use it for yes it, it, the, the adrenaline the dying people's dying adrenaline the energy that comes from them after when they're dying is extremely potent not only for the humans but for the reptilians it's oh, like yeah. a drug to them Oh yeah, absolutely. I've I've heard of the Queen. You know, it's like uh, they they feel like if they drink children's blood, that yes. uh, it will it gives them youth. And then you see these yeah. people living forever. It seems you got to start to wonder. <laughs> uh, yeah, you got to start to wonder. Yes, that's right. <laughs> well, hey, we've got a break coming up here, so why don't we okay. do that? Uh, we'll take the break and then we'll come back and talk some more. We'll get into your story more. I'd love to hear more about the people who you've spoke with, uh, as far as super soldiers and things like that and, and hear more about, uh, all that, dare I call it good stuff. Uh, Misha Johnston is my guest folks. And, um, it's true though. The stuff happens. It sounds, I know to somebody who might just be tuning in, you might be thinking, come on. But, uh, I'm telling you, it happens. They, I mean, I used to, I used to think the same way until, you know, things happened to me, uh, lines being cut, uh, denial of service attacks, uh, weirdos coming up to the door with just ridiculous stuff. I mean, it's all, I mean, this stuff happens now as far as the the ets and the mind control you know i have no doubt uh believing in all that too because i've seen crafts um i've talked to people who um i just 100 percent believe such as uh travis walton i just i mean these so i mean stories like that prove that we're being visited and now it's a matter of you know the ets that are working with any government a alphabet agencies i would be very wary of any of them because it cannot be good it just cannot be good so folks we're going to take this break we'll be back again misha johnston my guest i'm michael vera don't go anywhere and hey feel free to call in after the break 803-392-4lnm that's 4566 or you could skype us lnm Radio. We'll be right back.
Hi, I'm Joshua Vera, and I wanted to inform you that Late Night in the Midlands is offering limited on-air advertisement. With 30 and 60 second spots available, or inquire about placing your banner ad on the LNM website, or go ahead and package a deal, but either way, get the attention you deserve and join the LNM family. Contact us at mv at late night in the midlands.com. Again, that email is mv at late night in the midlands.com. Share our content and use the hashtag LNM radio for your chance to win a free subscription. Those who use it at least 10 times a month will find themselves entered into a drawing every month to win a free two month subscription from late night in the midlands. So spread our news, spread our website, and use hashtag LNM radio. LNM fans and late nighters around the world, have you captured something on that photo or video of yours? Send in your photos and videos of ghosts, orbs, UFOs, Planet X, or just about anything content related by submitting them to the Late Night in the Midlands Facebook group or fan page, or you can submit them on Twitter using hashtag LNM Radio. And if you would rather stay anonymous, then email them to us at mv at late night in the midlands.com. We will share them at our new fan page on the LNM website and may even ask you to come on air a few minutes and tell us about your photo or video. Late night in the Midlands, we're building a bridge to the truth and beyond. Become a late nighter without the late nights and subscribe now to help Late Night in the Midlands bring you the best guests with the best information. Hello, this is Dick Farrell, here to tell you about OxySilver. Legally available only through CureShop.com and HealthyWorldStore.com. Don't be fooled buying silver products from copycats and criminals. So help save lives putting drug lords and criminals out of business and keep the LNM network broadcasting. Register for our free cooperative at HealthWorldAffiliates.com forward slash 4948. That's HealthyWorldAffiliates.com forward slash 4948. And buy OxySilver and other great products in package specials at great discounts from the CureShop.com. Buy OxySilver. GI Floor Pro, Green Harvest, Zeolove, and Love Minerals at great discounts at CureShop.com. That's CureShop.com with two Ps. C-U-R-E-S-H-O-P-P-E dot com. Or call toll-free at 1-888-621-7611. That's 1-888-621-7611. Do it now. Are you a late-nighter? Well, if not, here is one more reason to join the family. We have added the Late Nighters Forum to LateNightInTheMidlands.com and it is open for discussion of our many topics and guests. Now you have a place where you can share your thoughts and ideas with the entire Late Nighter community. So become a Late Nighter by subscribing on our website, latenightinthemidlands.com, and start leaving your mark on the Late Nighter community now. The LNM Radio Network offers a moderated chat room at www.latenightinthemidlands.com. Just click the chat and listen page from the drop-down menu at the top of any page on the website, or click the listen live button at the top of the homepage at www.latenightinthemidlands.com. This show is for the mentally sane and for those who accept an alternate reality to the lie you have been told. If you're politically correct, politically brainwashed, or politically insane, then I recommend you turn the dial immediately and go back to the lies and distorted reality that makes you feel secure in your unsecure life. We cover everything should not be mistaken for we go along to get along. We are not those other shows who guide you down a dark hall because seeing is not beneficial to their bottom line. No, we turn a light on so you can truly see what lies ahead. We are not alternative, but if we were, then we would be an alternative to the lies, not the news, because sometimes the alternative is no better. We are independent. We are LNM, and we are saying it like it is. LNM Radio, exposing the truth, one show at a time. Is there proof of God's existence in our government's records? Author Jose Colazo brings his years of research into this stunning question to light with his new book. Discover how new and experimental technologies may change our world forever and uncover monumental proof and answers to mankind's greatest questions in God Does Exist. No more nuclear testing and more. 
You could find Jose Colazo's book, America's New Slavery, on Amazon.com. Become a late nighter without the late nights. And subscribe now to help Late Night in the Midlands bring you the best guests with the best information. On the east coast of the United States, from the capital city, Columbia, South Carolina, you're listening to Late Night in the Midlands with your host, Michael Vera. To talk to Michael Vera, dial 803-392-4566 or around the world on Skype. Just use Skype ID LNM Radio. All right. We are back. No one told us we had to come back. We're just here. We're late night in the Midlands. I'm Michael Vera and a very, very interesting guest uh, here with me tonight. And uh, I hope that you'll take the opportunity to uh, jump in and, and ask your questions. Misha Johnston is my guest. Their website's linked up on the homepage of LateNightInTheMidlands.com. And folks, I need you to remember something. I need you to remember that we cover everything. So um, keep that in mind. I mean, because I'm telling you, some of the most craziest stuff that we've ever covered on this show, I have no doubt it's not true. I guarantee it's true. I mean, really, because uh, it is the stuff that sounds most crazy that is the truth. I mean, that's how they get away with it, because too many people think, oh, that's nonsense, because I didn't hear that on CNN, or I didn't hear that on Fox News, or, you know, I don't know, maybe uh, Snorri didn't say it. So I don't know. It could be anything like that. Um, but the, the fact of the matter is, is that I take this stuff, with a grain of salt, but even a little more than that, because, I mean, these are people's experiences. And who am I to tell somebody that they didn't have that experience? So the best thing I can do is open my ears, listen. And so because she's not the first person that's told me stuff like this. I mean, we've, we've, there's other people. And, you know, it's like I said, not every psychic, everyone who says they're psychic is actually psychic. That's, you know, but there are psychics. Not everybody who says they were abducted by aliens was, but it does happen. And the government also gets involved in these things. So, I mean, if you want to pick and, and gnaw at, you know, who was and who wasn't, the fact is, is that it happens. And, and nobody's complained. I've got no bad reviews at all tonight of anything, but um, I'm just putting it out there. Uh, because I know how some people think. And so I try to just like interact immediately with that because it's always a possibility, just like my experiences. I can't prove it to anybody, but then I don't care to prove it to anybody. I mean, whatever. I know what happened, and that's all I really need. So, okay, so let's get back to it. The website, again, latenightinthemidlands.com. Go on over, become a member, be informed. Uh, become a late nighter so you can have late nights without the late nights. You can go back, listen, join into our forums, all that good stuff. Insider videos, you get access to that as well. Uh, so please uh, jump in. And hey, donations. Donations uh, are a big part of what keeps us here. So we would appreciate that as well. All right. So why don't we get back to it with my guest, Misha Johnston, and again, she is linked up on the homepage. And uh, Misha, how how frequent does this happen? I mean, how much of this is actually going on? I, I'm guessing that it, 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 the, the numbers are pretty high. This whole mind control and and even you know uh, my lab type stuff. Oh yes, it is much higher than people can probably imagine because um because of the um, you've got your sleepers out there that uh are people in my opinion this is just my opinion and a lot of other people in in my groups and such opinion but those people that are uh, all of a sudden start shooting up a school or going to a business or a restaurant or and shoot people or a church these are sleepers 
these are methods that they use and, and they can mind control these people not to say everybody who's been in an MK Ultra is going to be a sleeper because many of us have worked really hard to stop the control and get out of it but now but, this is let me ask you this now, or, 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 or get your opinion on this now there's many ways of doing this now they can actually put something in somebody's medication uh, right i mean that they can actually trigger from that they could use light they could use what kind of methods do they like to use They'll use sound. Um, they, like I said, they can do a, a phone call. They can, yes, they can use light. They can come in and get someone in, in the middle of the night. They have methods to do it. I will tell you a story about how they took my uh, partner and I um, in the middle of the night. Sure. So they they have they, they give you drugs, um, and yes, they can give you drugs let's say like a roofie, what they call a roofie, uh, they can give you that, you'll have no memory of what went on, they can do so many things and, and if they want to just uh, access somebody, they, they turn on that part of the program, they turn on that altar, they wake up that altar, that altar goes into, um, into uh, uh, mode and you know starts moving and it has no memory whatsoever of any of the altars. So let's say you've got one that goes out and shoots, and, and there's been other people like um, Sirhan Sirhan and some other ones who said, I, I don't ever remember anything. I don't remember doing this. People say, I don't remember doing it. Well, it's because they didn't do it. That altar that they have a way of accessing, making it wake up, and that altar of that person now switches into that altar and they can do and be whatever the controllers want them to be and, and you know what i have found in common with all these shooters these people who have walked in the theaters or what have you uh the all these shoot what they have in common is they all seem to be on those pharmaceutical psychiatric type drugs absolutely Absolutely. And, and so I think Big Pharma plays a big role in this whole mind control uh, conspiracy. I really do. Oh, yes. Um, you know, I have the MK Ultra groups. Well, I encourage people to get off them and get on some kind of uh, um, naturopathic or homopathic kind of uh, drug. Not, not a drug, but some kind of thing they could do instead of their um, uh, the Prozac and all these different ones. Because... It, it's just people talk about when they're on these drugs that they have these thoughts of killing or being killed or killing themselves. It's The drugs do play a huge part. In fact, um, I'm glad you brought that up because um, there was a, a particular thing I wanted in my research. I found out um, that hypnosis drugs, psycho, uh, psychosurgery. Now, this, again, I'm a first-generational and monarch okay mm -hmm. now they have the psychotronics which we'll get into a little bit too but the hypnosis drug psychosurgery or psychotronics separately and combined with the tools of this quest for the ultimate truth serum on one hand and the capability to create an agent who could not have his or her mission tortured out of them or even be aware that they were carrying secret information given or given a mission and this through their altered state of consciousness. More and more sophisticated drugs were experimented on with such things as LSD, ketamine, psychosilabine, as I mentioned earlier, and all the different, um, you know, the, the, the drugs that they are giving to people that they say, oh, you're bipolar, you're, you're mm -hmm. schizophrenic. If somebody comes in and mm -hmm. says, you know, I'm hearing voices and they're telling me, you know, I should kill somebody. Well, okay, you're automatically schizophrenic. But in fact, Psychotronics makes a huge part. This is going on. I find this so prevalent in my groups now that um, this uh, psychotronic warfare is going on, and they use, you know, the cell towers. They're using the satellites. They use all these methods. So within the drug you've got going that these people are taking, now they're being talked to in their head by these, uh, you know, people that are sitting at a computer. 
Well, well, what I'm what I'm thinking is that with the drugs, what the drugs will do is release these little uh, like uh, receptacles, like little antennas, maybe, and and, and then well, with the nanobites. The, yeah, and then of course the towers, uh, they control them through the towers, maybe. Oh yeah, they, you can We probably can't even imagine the ability that they have, you know. But you take some of the movies that the Illuminati slash, you know, whatever you want to call them, have allowed to come out, it's soft disclosure. They want those movies out. There's a perfect one. It's called, I encourage everyone who has any thoughts that they've ever been psychotronically uh, or targeted in any way to check out this movie. It's called Control Factor. It's an old B-rated movie, about Ten year, eight years old or something like that, and but excellent. It talks. They even in that movie they talk about the government's doing it. It's psychotronic warfare. They're using the cell towers. They got it all. They talk about how they take over entire uh, um, how, uh, neighborhoods and and do these things to them. And it's all in the the, the um, you know it's like the in justifies of the mean. It's all about. War and uh, the, uh, well, the that, secret war. That that's why Obama was giving out free phones. He said, oh, of course. Yeah, we got to have you connected. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs to be connected. Yeah, really. Now, we all should throw those away, but unfortunately, we have now been programmed, highly programmed, to be involved in them. And there's and, and it's not going to go away unless an outside source, of, you know makes a change well yeah. yeah i mean they've got back doors and everything but but i i yeah. the, the, the the mind control thing i mean i i just can't stress to people enough how real that is and when i i mean really i mean look at all our youth are most of them are on some kind of pharmaceutical they tell them they're adhd or they're this right. or they're that they're all on something every kid's got some kind of medication it seems they're taking nowadays and the parents unfortunately don't do their research and think that they're doing good for this child in return what they're doing is they're i mean they've got this kid he's pretty much set up and ready all they got to do is activate him and say do it now and and that's what they're they're building. There's your zombie apocalypse again. Oh yes, yeah. I, I I agree. You know, I never thought about the drugs actually having the nanobites uh, to to do the controlling because we've tried to figure out because before they had to have physically take us in order to do things, or they had uh, you know to get you programmed. Now, I'll, I have people that don't even ever remember. Uh, well, it's not, I guess. They may not remember, but anyway, they don't even remember that they've had any reason to be uh, involved and taken or anything like that. And it's happening to them. And it's like I thought it was a frequency thing. Do they know our frequency? It's probably part of it. But, yeah, they definitely could be using these drugs to do the, 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 the controlling. Well, yeah, I think, you know, what a perfect plan. I, I don't see why else they would want to put every kid on drugs. I mean, I literally had a meeting with uh, officials in my son's school, and and I came there with facts, and they could not handle it. As they tried to tell me it was good, I challenged them all. I said, you want, I want one of you to show me proof that any of your kids are on these drugs. And damn it, they weren't. And, and you know, and I brought facts about statistics. They just couldn't handle it. And so after that, they wouldn't invite me back. Matter of fact, I, I pretty much, I can't even get a phone call answered over there no more. Uh, yeah. Because you wouldn't put your kids on ADD drugs, right? Oh, that's it. Because I put yeah. up a, a fight about it. So, oh, he'll get better grades. Like, oh, well, that's worth the risk of a heart attack, stroke, or mass shootings. Yeah, let's do that. You know? Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's very good. It's wonderful if more people would fight this whole thing about this Ritalin. Because you have these doggone nurses will con contact people and it happened with my my grandson and it was the nurse that contacted and said uh, we really think that, that, that he should be on Ritalin well there's I don't care what you think it's not going to happen you know, my, <laughs> my, my, my son said no uh, there's no way he's he's six years old he's trying to get used to school <laughs> well, well, you know what, what, what it is is these kids. They're they've not been most of them. You know, when they're they're little, 
they're not, you know, submitted to all the tech. Well, nowadays they are starting to, but a lot of them not yep. submitted to the technology. And so they've got too much energy. So you got the teacher who doesn't want to have to do a, her job or his or his job. And, and so what they want is zombies sitting in the chair. So then they don't have to do nothing but write stuff on the board or put it on their little iPads, however they do it now. Uh, and that's parents mm-hmm. too. A lot of parents are just too busy. Oh, well, when he's on riddle and he doesn't bother me. You know? Yeah. And that's uh, sad. It's really sad. It's yeah. a really sad thing. In fact, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that because I'm actually working on with another uh, partner getting a school that is, uh, it's called Thrive at My Education. And the whole purpose for the school is to take these kids that uh, are uh, ADD, ADHD, um, OD, uh, autism, Asperger's, uh, dyslexia, all these different, what they have labeled them as. Um, as learning disabilities and and have a school for kids because these kids are really bright extremely bright very intelligent and that's the problem they're intelligent too intelligent to to go to school like they want to teach them and and like a for instance with an ADD student you don't sit them down and try to get them to learn you take them uh, like for instance if you want to do homework with them you've got um all right, uh, here's your math, here's your English, and here's your um, history. And you set it out in front of them and give them some good and healthy snacks there. And you don't, you take away the chair and you let them do their homework that way. They'll be fine. They'll do it much better. It's the way they learn. They're they're wired differently. These these kids that um, more and more of a, I call them the really special star seed kids. Very. And they've been coming in since the 70s. Very, They're intelligent. Very well said because that's what I've said. It's not every kid learns the same. I know no. when I was in school, I found it extremely boring. I I mean, mm-hmm. I, I wanted to do, you know, I'm a more of a hands-on kind of guy. And, and you know, that just so it bore, they figure, well, we'll teach one way and every kid will get it. And then they, yeah. when a kid don't get it, they say he's falling behind. It's like, well, he's not really falling behind. He's ignoring you because you're boring. I mean, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This kid's creative. He needs a better way of learning, you know. And you know, just numbers on a on a on a on a chalkboard's not enough for some. So yeah, I get that. So so you're actually uh, you're doing something like this. Yes, yes. We're having a lot of problems because it, we're tr- trying to get the five hundred one c three. Now we're going to maybe go to an eight and see if that works because we keep get the the uh, paperwork sent back. No, it's not good enough for the government. Well, I'm sure they have already seen and realized this is not a school we want to happen. So we're trying to find a way around it. You know, I mean, if we can't get the nonprofit, then hopefully we'll get some people who want to invest in their kids' future and you know maybe somebody with big money or something. Because five, it's, we've been at this for about a year and a half now. We're a two, we're almost to the date where we have to start everything all over completely and uh-huh. start from the beginning again. But we're getting a lot of bureaucracy from it, a lot. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Anytime anything's good for a society, um, you know, they try to put laws up to to stop it. Uh, so it's it's no uh, no surprise to me. And so, okay, so going right down to all of this stuff that's all the control that's happening on our planet. I was talking to a guest last night, for instance, and I was talking to him about our history. It seems like it's being erased from us. You look at what's going on, say, even in the Middle East, destroying artifacts, uh, blowing up, you know, uh, ancient you know, I don't, artifacts and in, 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 in sites, uh, yeah. in, in the Middle East that really uh, we haven't even begun to discover and uncover and and it would tell us so much more about who we are and where we came from and it's it seems like more and more that's being destroyed and hidden from us and this is just my opinion I don't think it's an accident I think it's perfect synchronicity I, I'm for one am not believable on the whole ICs. I just know there's a lot of false flags all the time. Sure. They've been doing false flags for a long time. ICs could just be another CIA operative and mm. I don't know. 
you know, they drive, uh, what is it they drive? Uh, well, they drive the... Dotsons or something? <laughs> well, yeah, they're driving the new vehicles that uh, the United States government left there for them. Exactly. Yeah, really. Okay, well, maybe. Maybe that's, they left it, or maybe well, that's part of the, their, the, what they get for doing what they're doing. But it, it's perfect. If they go destroy all our, all our history, then we, we don't get to find out who we really are. Well, and right. We just keep led this this line of what history is and it's not true there's so much more well yeah and people are asking way more questions now than they were even when i was a kid um i mean there's a lot of questions being answered and there's like great technology now that uh you know people can actually scan the earth and find see what's you know if it's worth digging in certain areas or what have you and I guess it's starting to get dangerous for them because for uh, thousands of years they've had people believe uh, in different religions and stuff. And I'm not going to knock people's religions or your belief systems. I'm just saying that they have used that to control people through through the years. And I think that you know uh, they're they're trying hard to keep their little system together. Um, but, uh, you know, I know that there's more to our history. It's not all just tied up in one book. Um, and, and I know that they're purposely trying to destroy and hide what they can from us. But, um, I think that, you know, at some point the truth's going to come out. Um, I don't know how much longer they can hide it. People are having UFO sightings all over the place. I mean, there's no doubt that we're not alone. Um, a hacker who hacked into uh, NASA's computers released information about the Navy having a secret space program. So there's a mm-hmm. lot going on. Yes, it's really close to probably finding out about Mars because now they're uh, saying different things. So there's more and more that is being revealed, and um, they may not be able to stop it. It, you know, I I don't believe that it's any one group the disclosure. I think it, everyone is the disclosure for this whole thing. A lot of experiences are the disclosure because they've experienced, they've been on the ships, we've been to the planets, and we know what what it's like. Uh, we know about some of the ETs, and we know that in most of the cases. Now, I'm not going to say all by any means, but. That's why the word abduction has changed to experiencer because most people have had experiences where they realized at first they thought they were in fear. It was uh, it was really scary. That's the very first thing, of course, because that's what we're programmed with from the very beginning in our lives. So that's the first thought people think they they're afraid of it. They're uh, they're fearful. But then when people start looking at the experience, they realize what they've been shown. I mean, I, I was taken on board ships and shown um, amazing things on these holographic uh, screens. Um, I was. One particular time, um, I was shown this devastated, it was definitely New York, it was devastated, and it was ecologically devastated. It wasn't like a bomb, it was, uh, you could tell it was ecological damage. And they asked me, um, telepathically of course, they always, it's always telepathic, Mm -hmm. they said, is this the earth you want? And, you know, of course they said no, and they said, well, You all must help. You must do something. So um, I believe there's a lot of time travelers in those experiences as well because they want us to to stop us from getting to a point where we're going to be destroyed. These are possible pictures of what time on Earth is in, you know, 20, 50 years from now. Who knows? You know, I'm I'm not not saying that's what it is, but it's uh, definitely – was New York. I could tell it was New York. And um, so there were so many different messages. And, and in fact, another one about fear was really amazing. I was taken to this place where it was like in the middle of, there was nothing there. It was just, I, I can't explain it. It was just uh, white air. I don't know. It was just nothing. And there was a, a man and another woman and myself. They said, we'd like you to, this is, a, this is a test. They always are doing tests all the time. This is a, a, a lesson, not a test. This is a lesson on manif- uh, manifestation. And I, okay, so they said to me, what, what, what would you um, like? What, what would you, they 
telepathically asked me, what is something that you would like, that you think about? And I thought about, I love to swim, and but I um, prefer a lake. So I start, immediately was swimming around in a lake. And then the, the next woman came up and, and they asked her, and she said, well, I'd love to see colors like I've never seen, like a rainbow of colors. There was this gorgeous rainbow that we all saw that was beautiful. And then the third man... They ask him, and evidently he must have been in some real fear and negativity because up jumps this horrible-looking monster that we all saw, and then they made it disappear. And they said, Beloveds, do you understand? You must clear away the fear before you come to this side, is what they called it, side. It was the best way for me, I guess, to understand it. But I believe the rest, the, the next dimension. And so um, they're... They really do try. A lot of the different ETs are trying to get the point across. And some may be grays, some may be not just that people have had experience that, they're, uh, that they are in, happy with, I, and some might be humans. I, I really think that they are trying to get a message across to us, and I think that one way that they've been doing that is through crop circles. And yes. for some reason, people just don't want to pay attention to it. And that's just, I'm sure that there's fashions of our government who are paying very close attention to it. But, but, but I mean, in general, I mean, you don't even hear science really talking about it. And it's, you know, oh, some man, some guys with boards on their feet are doing that. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes, there's wonderful messages in the crop circles and, and in the last year. Uh, couple of years they've got some really really amazing ones so uh people really do need to pay attention to that for sure so um yeah so so um uh so what what is their their purpose i mean there's 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 various uh fashions of these ets and so they're living underground some of them here uh, on earth and you know i've had People report to me that they've seen these UFOs go down into volcanoes and disappear, and I'm guessing mm -hmm. that they have some kind of tunnels that lead right to wherever uh, underground. But these aren't just bases. These are like roads, and I, I've seen pictures of what looked like farmland below ground. Um, right. all, I mean, they've really got it set up down there, don't they? Well, see, now, I haven't seen those, uh, you know, those. I've seen the... Uh, the, the tunnels I've seen you know the um, I, I know I've seen the trams where the the train that that train travels all over the United States and I'm sure the world as well because it goes underneath the ocean so um, so that's way if you're like in California and they want you in you know Tennessee you can be there you know in such a short time so the whole thing about people like for instance, I um, have a memory of being in uh, the Dulce base. Now, I, I never lived in New Mexico, and it may not have been Mexico. It may have been another base, but to my understanding, for what I saw and what went on there, that must have been the base I was at, and it was a base where I was doing genetic, uh, all kinds of genetic uh, experimentation. I had people in cages. They had beings that looked part alien part human in cages they had people humans these are people and i'm saying people that looked like um part animal um there were people crying that smell was i know it's the smell of death it was a very awful smell and these were i don't this this is the kind of thing you know now whether i remote viewed in there i can't tell you whether i was 100 percent in there i just remember i was in there and i smelled it and i experienced it um i sometimes wonder how i survived i i, I to this day i mean i don't really know how i survived uh except that i kind of feel like um you know we have made an agreement before we came on this planet of of uh, I believe that of what we will endure in life what we want to learn what because it is a very experiential learning planet so I believe that I was supposed to learn and uh, learn about the, the MK Ultra uh, along with the ET experience along with uh, all the different government and the, and the monarch and everything 
I agreed to do those things, and in some, you know, whether I remember it or not, I, I agreed to do those. But I, I believe that you have a place where, you know, they can do this much, but they can go no further. So, can they kill you? No, they can't kill you. They can torture you, they can do all these things, but they can't kill you. That's what, that's my only suggestion of why I, I survived. Um, Hmm. I was certainly, you know, tortured a lot. I was, uh, I was also um, in when I uh, moved to California and was working on a book. It's uh, a book on uh, my lab. I wish I could remember the name now. Can't remember. Never got to finish the book. But I was with Melinda Leslie, and we were doing the research and working on this book. And uh, it was on my lab and the um, the military reabduction and covert. Um, abduction and everything of of the my lab experience, and out of that we talked to a lot of special forces and ex-military, and we had a lot of people who had um, given us their stories. So we were writing, putting the the book together to write it, and many things happened. Everything from uh, one one in one year, I had. Um, three automobile accidents, actually four, because I had one even in the rental. But um, Melinda and I was in, in one accident together where all of a sudden when I was driving and it was dark at night and, and um, a light came from nowhere. I, I have no idea what, and it totally blinded me. And My choice was to go into the mountain or go off the cliff, and I realized I had to go to the mountain. So you know, there was one ex <coughs> experience there. And then um, I was threatened several times um, verbally. I I was like uh, to meet somebody to do an interview with them, and I was threatened that you know you're supposed to die if you don't stop talking about this. You're going to, you know, or they would say this is a term they said over and over again. In fact, they said said um, you need to go back home. Go find yourself a husband and get out of this because it's not going to bring you any happiness. Now, they said this. It's not going to bring you any happiness at least four times to me. And um, it went through these different times. And I would uh, meet people to, to uh, interview them. Um, like this one particular time, uh, I met this guy in the in the restaurant. Or actually, it, w it was a restaurant bar. I was sitting at the bar. He came in and sat down beside me. He was wearing a flak jacket. With a lieutenant colonel on it, but there was um, his jacket was covering. I couldn't see a name, but it said lieutenant colonel. I remember seeing that, and he said, "Well, well, well, haven't we been a busy little girl?" He said, "You have been told and told and told to stop this. You're not writing this book. You're not continuing this. This is over." It's and. Um, I'm just kind of a spunky person, and I told him, but people have a right to know. People have a right to know. And he says, no, the people aren't ready to know. They can't know. They aren't ready to know. And then um, he said, it'd be just a real shame if something happened to that cute little granddaughter of yours. And he said where they, my family was and everything about them. And, and he said, you know, they, they uh, pick people's bones up in the desert all the time. And they don't know how they died. So you know, um, I was born there, and then that very that that was after like uh, a crazy man was after me. Another uh, another crazy man was after me, and then that guy, and then I had decided that was it. I think they they were serious. And uh, uh, but Melinda and I was on Art Bell show, and we had uh, uh, was with George Siegel, and we'd had the interview and then the next night she stayed over at my house because we were doing a uh, working on um, a presentation we we're going to be doing at a convention and she so she spent the next night and then the next uh, day we woke up and I came out of my bedroom and she was sleeping on the couch my my coffee table was broken I said hey what happened to my coffee table and she says I don't know what happened to it and I and you know it was kind of an odd morning it was and she said well I got to get back to Laguna and so she went on back home well I she was feeling the same way I was feeling I felt really that foreboding feeling that something is not amiss here so I went to my therapist and had a regression and found out that that night 
uh, we guys came in night vision, drug us out of bed, took me down the stairs of the condo, threw us in a van, uh, took us to an underground base where, well, they took us to a base. Uh, she remembers the elevator. I, I was out, in and out all the time. Um, when they, I should say, that when uh, they tried to get her off the couch, um, evidently the drugs didn't take as well for her because she lost her balance and fell on my coffee table. So that's how the coffee table got broken. And uh, once we were in the underground base, uh, my memory was that I was uh, sitting there, uh, woke up and, and, and um, this military guy in, in brass uniform kind of was pacing back and forth and telling me the same thing again. Like, this is over, you're done, you're not going to ever talk about this, you're, you, this, you, it's through. And he said, um, it's not going to bring you any happiness, you need to go home. And, you know, he said the same old spiel, you know. And then he said, and to bring the, drive the point home, I, the, how serious we are, I want you to meet somebody. And in walks this reptilian. Now I have a picture of him. He's like a gold color, um, big with a tail, more like a dinosaur. I mean, more like a, well, yeah, uh, like a dragon, more like a dragon look to him. Possibly had wings. I couldn't tell for sure because he had these kind of tough things on his neck. And you have, and a, he, you have a picture? I have a drawing, oh. not a picture. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, can't get pictures there. <laughs> I think uh. they might frown on that <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> just checking <laughs> <laughs> so um i uh, i had had an artist do a rendition for me and uh so they uh he came over and he, he i could hear his tail swishing back and forth as he walked across, and he came and he got in front of me and he bent down looked in my eyes and this is like a mind thing and the next thing i know I'm seeing atrocious things happening to my family, um, and um, mm -hmm. then you know, then uh, it. I didn't hear him screaming because of the horrible things that were happened to him, and so I kind of broke gaze. It stopped for a second because I. Um, then he looked at me, and that was the last thing he. I can't remember if he left or what, but I remember that was the last thing I remembered. Um, did did he? But it did scare me. Did he really bad? Did he family. speak or did he no. use mind? It was all mind stuff. It was all in the mind. It was all pictures in my in my mind of what um, um, guys in with big swords and ninja swords would do to. But dis members. despite being having your life threatened, you were brave and you've kept on, obviously, huh? Well, not completely, no. No, in fact, Melinda, at the same time that that happened to me that night, she had uh, uh, the same reptilian come in and put in her mind that he was going to rape her and rip her apart. So um, then, um, you know, I had, we continued after that. Yes, but then after that last um, guy that had uh, told me about my family and everything like that, I had realized I I think I can't do it anymore. So I went home to uh, tell my talk to my kids about it, and uh, on the way home, I was ran off the road with uh, going on the freeway with a van, and in fact it was um, it was you know like these slow truck lanes that they have. Well, I'm driving along, and all of a sudden, a white van comes in between the two trucks and runs me off the road. I was uh, able to keep the car from flipping, and it land. It came to a, a, a rest, basically, on a, a, a Joshua tree. So I survived that, and it, it was my witnesses said it was the craziest thing. They were the truck drivers. They said it was the craziest thing. All of a sudden, this van zips up comes in between us, has no markings, has no license plate, and it stays there until you show up, and then it runs you off the road. We're sure that it was on purpose. I'm like, yeah, I know exactly who it was. They tried to ride you ahead to get the, to get the, get them, and nobody could ever see them again. So I realized they were really, really serious. Okay, So then I, I told my family I'm quitting, and I went back uh, to, to California and uh, turned my car in, and 
was going across town with the rest of all my books and everything to meet Melinda and my my tapes and everything and said to give it to her and uh, a guy ran a light and hit me broadside and spun me around about three or four times so what I realized they were really really serious so I quit I turned it all over to her and unfortunately she had continual things go on and so she never got to finish the book either Wow Wow, but but nevertheless, I mean, you're still talking about it. So. I'm back talking about it. That was in two. That was not the right time to bring it up. Just like he said, the people aren't ready. Nobody's ready to hear this now. Well, and he said now he said that, and so um, it, it, that was in two thousand. So so uh, what do you th- what do you think will happen? You know, if everybody if they announced it tomorrow, I mean. How well do you think the world would take it? I think there'd be there'd be some who 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 would have a problem with it big time. Um, but I think what about the majority of the people? You think they'd? Go I think crazy? a lot of people are waking up. And you just talk to the normal people; they they they're even awake about the politics and the and the and the presidential you know debates yeah. and stuff. People are waking up, and I think that um, people would be able to now what they can't handle i don't think i think they're right in the aspect that the people aren't ready to hear that their government has been doing this to them and they would have to do a lot of um i mean they've been doing horrible things for so many years um they have that part i don't know i just don't know yeah i believe that the at disclosure probably will come and but they're going to try to keep a lot of secrets still. Yeah, yeah, you know, and and I think I've always thought one of the biggest reasons they keep it a secret, I think one of the biggest ones would be the technology behind these crafts. I mean, I have always thought that was part of it, but I think it's much much bigger than that. Oh yeah, the tech not only the technology behind the craft, but the technology that we've been given. I mean, we're just getting if we consider we are now going to have a watch that is, um, uh, you know, a telephone. I mean, these, these you take 50 years of what we, they're shown that we have as technology, add 50 years, that's really what we really have. There's, you know, there's so much technology, not just the ships, but, but in every form. And, of course, the psychotronics and, and all of that. So they have to do, how are they going to um, admit to all the things that factions of our government that the one let's say the ones in control have done to, to well, humanity well their plan is to not have to actually admit what they want to do is i mean they've got colleges like yale where the students there are all for the first amendment being wiped away so what they're going to do is they're going to protect themselves first then they'll tell us so they'll take away the guns take away uh, our freedom of speech and, and those kind of things, and and then they'll tell us because yeah. no one will dare speak up. I mean, after all, you saw what happened to the last one who did in the middle of downtown, you know, and that's how it'll be, uh, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's it's uh, yeah. one hell of a world that we're living in right now. That's all I could say. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. It, and uh, so we've got one more break coming up here in a moment. Um, but before we take the break, uh, you had mentioned time travel. And and I think uh, uh, about time. Now, if there is time travel going on, whether it be ancient uh, humans or, or, or ETs, that's kind of a scary thought, too, because they can continue to go back in time and change things. And so we may never get the upper hand if that's the case yeah that time travel has been going on since the montauk boys they they started the time travel back in and i don't know what year it was but uh probably the 50s 60s something mm-hmm. like that so at least then and so uh, i there's numerous people i i've met that were in the montauk program that have memories of being in those those chairs now they weren't the time travelers they were the ones that made it possible for the others to time travel by using uh, their energies and such but uh, the time travel is something yes that they've been doing 
All so. right. Well, hey, let's take this last break. Then we'll okay. come back. I'd like to hear more about super soldiers when we come back. Maybe you could tell me more about that. Uh, folks, this is Late Night in the Midlands. I'm Michael Vera. I'm speaking with Misha Johnston. Her website is linked up over on latenightinthemidlands.com on the home page. Uh, but if you're not there, it is www.starseedawakening.org. Uh, and again, it's been uh, passed around in the chat room and it is linked up on our home page. So uh, we're talking about some pretty out there stuff folks but you know what it's the stuff that's kind of been behind the veil for a very very long time abductions are real and i've always thought there was a fashion of government that does some of it and that you would have your ets who do some of it again i go back to travis walton who passed lie detector tests um i have no doubt that he was on a ship um and i have no doubt that it was probably an accident that he even ended up in that situation he got you know but anyways it, it shows that people are telling the truth i mean one lie detector test maybe one guy maybe how about four guys several tests i mean come on something's going on here and then i'll tell you again when i had my procedure when they did that stent procedure on me uh back in 2014 i remember being in it seemed like a dark room the light shining in my face from their heads almost it looked like you know and i'll tell you in any other situation boy if that didn't remind me of the descriptions people have given me of abductions and and what they wake up to um really spooky stuff anyways we're gonna take this break we'll be back late night in the midlands I lost track a long time ago I was walking out way down the road I was out of town when they pulled up slow they shot me up, but I shot them down low. They've been gunning for me now ever since I worked at Los Alamos. It ain't the Constitution what they done. It ain't what the founding fathers won up on Capitol Hill. They sure got a plan. Make my Hello, this is Dick Farrell, here to tell you about OxySilver. Legally available only through CureShop.com and HealthyWorldStore.com. Don't be fooled buying silver products from copycats and criminals. Read Dr. Horowitz's book, Healing Celebrations, to learn how miracle healings can be made to happen through faith, prayer, and a pure diet. Get great immunity using vitamin C, D, and OxySilver, Liquid Dentist, GI Flora Pro, a top-shelf probiotic. Use Green Harvest as a great-tasting meal substitute for energizing organic nutrients and losing weight. And Zeolove, a natural clays for detoxifying your body. More advice, all these products, and more are available from thecureshop.com. Register for our free cooperative at healthworldaffiliates.com forward slash 4948. That's healthyworldaffiliates.com forward slash 4948. And buy Oxy Silver and other great products in package specials at great discounts from thecureshop.com. That's cureshop.com with two Ps. C-U-R-E-S-H-O-P-P-E dot com. Or call toll free at one 888 7611. That's 1 888 621 7611. Do it now. Hey, folks. Do you love late night in the Midlands? Do you miss shows because of the time of night? Do you wish you could listen at your convenience? Well, we can help you out with that one. Become a late nighter without the late nights and subscribe. Become a late nighter for just $5 a month. That's right, 5 bucks a month for the paranormal, the unknown, the known, but most important, the truth. Go to www.latenightinthemidlands.com and subscribe right away to become a late nighter and help keep the LNM Radio Network on the air. 
share our content and use the hashtag LNM Radio for your chance to win a free subscription. Those who use it at least 10 times a month will find themselves entered into a drawing every month to win a free two-month subscription from Late Night in the Midlands. So spread our news, spread our website, and use hashtag LNM Radio. LNM fans and late nighters around the world, have you captured something on that photo or video of yours? Send in your photos and videos of ghosts, orbs, UFOs, Planet X, or just about anything content related by submitting them to the Late Night in the Midlands Facebook group or fan page, or you can submit them on Twitter using hashtag LNM Radio. And if you would rather stay anonymous, then email them to us at mv at late night in the midlands.com. We will share them at our new fan page on the LNM website and may even ask you to come on air a few minutes and tell us about your photo or video. Late Night in the Midlands, we're building a bridge to the truth and beyond. Are you a late nighter? Well, if not, here is one more reason to join the family. We have added the Late Nighters Forum to LateNightInTheMidlands.com and it is open for discussion of our many topics and guests. Now you have a place where you can share your thoughts and ideas with the entire Late Nighter community. So become a Late Nighter by subscribing on our website, LateNightInTheMidlands.com and start leaving your mark on the Late Nighter community now. The LNM Radio Network offers a moderated chat room at www.LateNightInTheMidlands.com. Just click the chat and listen page from the drop-down menu at the top of any page on the website, or click the Listen Live button at the top of the homepage at www.LateNightInTheMidlands.com. Hey, Late Nighters, I have a secret I want to share with you. What if I told you there's a way to hear some of our show content free on YouTube? Well, it just so happens there's a guy who is honest and supports Late Night in the Midlands big time. And he owns a YouTube channel I highly recommend. Non-Human Entities. Yes, Non-Human Entities. And if you do not have a pencil handy... No sweat. You can just click one of the many banners on our website. Non-Human Entities. That's Non-Human Entities. Again, just look for them on YouTube or click the banner on LateNightInTheMidlands.com for Non-Human Entities. Is there proof of God's existence in our government's records? Author Jose Calazzo brings his years of research into this stunning question to light with his new book, Discover how new and experimental technologies may change our world forever and uncover monumental proof and answers to mankind's greatest questions in God Does Exist. No more nuclear testing and more. You could find Jose Colazo's book, America's New Slavery, on Amazon.com. Imagine, if you will, a man, a media, speaking the truth. Imagine a show that covers UFOs, ET races, the paranormal, and the not-so-normal. A media that speaks the truth no matter who or what it leads to. Imagine, if you will, a media that covers everything. (laughs) Folks, you just entered... LNM Zone. LNM, keeping it real when others don't. On the east coast of the United States, from the capital city, Columbia, South Carolina, you're listening to Late Night in the Midlands with your host, Michael Vera. To talk to Michael Vera, dial 803-392-4566 or around the world on Skype. Just use Skype ID LNM Radio. Well, I don't know if we've flown it sky high, and I'm not certain that any lies have been told, but I'll tell you what, fascinating, fascinating stories uh, from my guest tonight, and you know, if it was just one person's testimony, I may say, okay, maybe there's something else going on here, but... I've heard this from the many, and I think there's something to it. I really do. I, I mean, me, myself, 
I try to go by experience, and my experiences are limited. I've I've seen craft. I've never actually dealt with the beings on them, whether they be human or what have you. Um, I'd like to. Even if it turns out to be a bad experience, I'd, I'd certainly it's an experience I'd like to have before I head into the next chapter of whatever and leave this planet, you know, spiritually, of course. Uh, folks, go on over to LateNightInTheMidlands.com, become a member, be informed, and by all means, inform others. Let them know we're on Monday through Friday right here on the LNM Radio Network. And also a shout out to our affiliates, High Point Radio, 100.5 FM, 1620 AM in New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. SHR Media, hello to you as well. All right, so uh, let's get back to it. My guest tonight is Misha Johnston. And again, she is linked up on the homepage. Really good guest. I mean, um, revealing quite a bit here tonight. And if you've got any questions, you're, I'd be more than happy to take your calls at, uh, well, the number is on the website. Let's see here. 803. We've changed our number, folks. So 803-392-4566. That's 4LNM. I still have to look at it or I'm not sure. You know, and it's going to be that way probably for a few more months. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and take us a call here in just a moment. All right, Misha, we are back, and we do have a call uh, rather quickly, too. I think this is James in Boston. Am I right? Yeah, sir, Michael. How you doing? I'm doing good. Welcome aboard, James. Thank you. How you doing, Misha? Hi, James. Fine, thank you. Uh, I met you uh, somewhere down the road. I go to a lot of conferences, and uh, I, I saw you uh, once uh, before. But I, I missed you at UFO Con earlier this year in March. But uh, how come you wasn't at the uh, Experiences uh, con, UFO Con here recently, last month? Uh, due to my work schedule at home, I couldn't make it to that one. Yeah, because I thought you were originally scheduled. Um, I've got a crazy question. I, I don't know if I ask these crazy questions. Uh, <laughs> I I see a lot of the people that that have been abducted, you know, myself included. That we kind of age differently. We don't we don't age like uh, like everybody else. We look younger looking. Like even right. Travis Bolton kind of looks young. Is that is that have, do you see that with the group of the people in the groups that you that you've started? Absolutely, absolutely. We. I I believe it has to do rather than we're talking about the the government we're talking about the ET and yes uh, it it is right down the line uh, so many people do not look their age they they are healthy I believe that ET has done something to me and I'm just speaking for myself for my health because I'm I'm a very healthy person and I do not look my age and this just is a normal thing. So as an yeah, experiencer, uh, that that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I noticed that you know, I pick up on that stuff. I found that I've uh, actually, um, I, I was at um, Phoenix and they found a, an implant in me and these two people were freaking out because it was giving off a signal and they had never seen one that had given off a single signal like that before. I felt kind of uncomfortable, like a guinea pig, when they were kind of pushing me around and stuff. You know, oh, look at this, you know. So I'm there, I'm there with you. And like I said, I I figure things out, and I I noticed that, and I'm glad you confirmed that for me. Thank you. I want to bring that out. Oh, thank, thank you, Michael. You. Thanks for thank the question. All right. Well, thank hope you. Hope to see you again, James. Yeah. What's that? I said I hope to see you at another conference. Oh, you will definitely. Yeah, okay. definitely will. I'm sure of it. Okay. Thank you, Misha. All right. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much for the call, James. Uh, yeah, James, he gets he gets around to the various conferences. Um, he he's uh, he gives us updates all the time on that stuff. So we appreciate the call. Uh, so uh, what about super soldiers? Tell tell me a little bit about super soldiers, what they are, and because it seems like now with the internet, uh, it seems like every time Dick and Harry claims to be something. So, yeah. how, how, so tell me a little bit about super soldiers. 
Okay, well, I can only tell you what I know. Mm -hmm. um, not being a super soldier myself, I can't talk firsthand. I can only talk from the, my groups. I, right. I know people in my groups that are super soldier. Uh, during the conventions that I've spoke at, I've uh, met super soldiers. One of the conventions with um, uh, the uh, MK Ultra mine and uh, uh, Super Soldier Conference here in Vegas, I interviewed. I was the the MC and interviewed uh, super soldiers. So that was actually my first time around super soldiers. But super soldiers don't have to be, um, you know, buffed up guys and, you know, right. and militaristic. They don't have to be in the military. They don't have to be buffed up guys. They can be women. They're psychic soldiers just as much as super soldiers. A lot of the super soldiers are even used psychically. So, it, it is in both cases. I have women that um, are super soldiers have experience, and mainly what it is is they're having experiences in an astral way. Let's say in their dream time, where they experience uh, whether they're fighting other species or they're um, fighting against their own people. You know, sometimes they are. Um, sometimes they're. Just remember being trained, being underground bases. Um, they can remember being psychically used. They remember the cloning program. There's a cloning program that a lot of the super soldiers talk about. That you know, I I have to say, as many people have come to me, there has to be some truth in it. That um, they feel that somehow they cloned these super soldier and. They can be using them, and if they die, it's no big deal because they have more clones. So I've had super soldiers talk about that. I um, had super soldiers talk about the physical aspect and the psychic aspect. Women, and like I said, women and men. Uh, the ET part of it too. Mm -hmm. and, and how do you? How do you? How do you kind of weed through who really was a part of one of these programs and somebody who just, I don't know, have been brainwashed to think that they've been a part of one of these programs? Is there a way? Um, is there a way for to see if they've been brainwashed? Well, it, it, the whole thing is who brainwashed them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it's the factions of the government, the Blackhawks that did the, the the brainwashing, well, then therefore they're something. Oh they're, well, well, yeah, and and I'm not saying that one's not as severe as the other. I mean, they're both mm -hmm. a form of manipulation. Um, mm -hmm. That so yeah. And you're probably thinking saying too because I have had some wannabe super soldiers i've met some of those too and they are not there are some questions you ask there's some things you know as a person who's been in the underground bases there's you know uh, you can also tell by the way they talk the emotion behind it the feeling behind it you know it's like when i'm talking to you and stuff you know my body is like shaking i can i can feel the emotion if you're seeing somebody talking about the emotion and it is not somebody you know crazy or anything like that you know because sometimes occasionally and not very often but occasionally i'll have somebody who is um is um let like we say challenged it, it's how they believe oh. it's coming maybe they believe it that it, and it's not real um so yeah mm -hmm. delusional a little bit but um uh, most of my people in my group i i should say all of my people the people who are not don't last the people who come after week after week after week and they're talking about their experience, they're just trying to find answers. So uh, if you – I think that's the way to tell, you know, by, by the what you feel in your heart. And, and I'm, I'm quite discerning and I can discern by talking to them. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty good. I think the, of of you know I I, could, I guess I could see through the glass, uh, sort of speak, uh, keeping the language clean here. Uh, but but you know I can I could tell uh, when somebody's BSing me most of the time. I'm not going to say that I don't get fooled once in a while. I think we all do. Sure. 
but uh, but no doubt that that this these kind of programs are real. So a super soldier program uh, that that I hear many talk about, then you would say that 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 program is is a real program. Oh, I'd say it definitely is a real program. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know people who have totally gotten lost in it, and they were one person, you know, eight or nine years ago. And and uh, then they they turn to another person. Let me. I, I also will give you an example. One time at um, here in Las Vegas, at a Super Soldier was like the second uh, Super Soldier uh, MK Ultra Summit. A group of us were actually abducted out of our hotel room and taken uh, to a waiting kind of um, what it was was a rider truck. They had a couple of chairs in there. They were doing things there was just a whole um one of the super soldiers that had been at the conference but did not speak was responsible for this happening and had actually uh taken uh, he was the one in charge of it uh, all of us re- you know remember him remember what he looked like and um so we were taken into this van and sit in a chair and different things were done to different people uh, when I, in speaking from my experience, uh, I, you know, woke up and I was absolutely shocked because I hadn't had any kind of experience for a long time. I figured, hey, I'm old enough; they're leaving me alone. But um, he just kind of said this snide remark. He says, "Don't worry, you're just here for your yearly checkup," yeah. and that's what he said. And so a lot of us had um, didn't really have the memory of it uh, until. Uh, a couple of people who did remember it and started telling everybody about it. And at the next conference, they named all the names who were it, part of this mass abduction. And, you know, so uh, one by one, we each found out uh, and found out ourselves, our own individual stories. I had another regression and I found out indeed that <laughs> it had happened. So, so, so why do you why do you suppose these abductions are happening? I hear about lots of different reasons. So there probably would be lots of different reasons why abductions are happening. Is it? I mean, is it just a hybrid type thing, or is it? What are they doing? Why do they need so many people? Okay, so talking back about the ETs now yes. instead of the government. So right. We'll, we'll switch over to that. So in. Yes, there is a hybrid program. It's a very huge hybrid program. I think there are several reasons behind it. I believe um, that I I was told that you know that they are trying to um, improve us as far as um, our health wise and our life longevity, and also for in, in the other side of it, they are trying to get our emotions we have more emotions and all of that than any so many of the other races so like for instance uh some of them have bred it out the emotions and they want it back so they need that um also um the hybrid program many of the different groups do not have um uh birth childbirth anymore they they do in a kind of a clone type of thing or however their genetics works. Well, that, so, that, that seems kind of familiar when you look at what's happening, uh, you know, here on earth with, uh, uh, genetically modified babies and stuff that they're doing. I mean, you can pretty much go through the drive through and pick your baby, blonde hair, blue eyes, uh, I don't know, add an extra toe on, on that foot. I mean, really, they're, they're mm-hmm. that's what they're doing. But go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm- oh, no, that's the good point. It's a, I was going to actually bring that out, too, because it is a very important point that what's happening with the ETs is now happening here and the genetics are happening. And in the underground bases, they had their own genetic pl- uh, program as well. It was not for, in my opinion, a positive reason, but the ones that the, with the ETs, uh, I believe were in the, in my experience anyway. Um, and also people will say, well, it's, you know, that's terrible. You don't get to have your kids and everything. But if our children that are born on these ships, because, you know, of course, they impregnate a woman um, and, you know, a six-week gestation period, they take the, 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 the 
baby and they finish the uh, uh, the the whole rest of the uh, maturing on board the ship and so um, these children um, are um, uh, sorry hang on a second here oh, no, uh, these <laughs> these uh, children um, are hybrids of um, either they can be totally genetics with ETs and and humans or they can be your your husband uh, can have some of the genes and the ET I mean there's all different ways that they're doing it they've been practicing on, on this probably you know for at least since the 50s and so they are probably much longer than that too well actually what should I say they've been practicing on this since uh, the beginning when the Sumerians were here um, so when the Sumerians came, I mean, they're a part of perfect example of the genetics that started happening then. So it's just a continuation of it now, and they've come back. So they, uh, this people will be really upset because they don't th have their children. But if these children cannot flourish in our environment, our pollution, then I'd much rather have my child live up there than come here and die. You know? That's because they can't, they can't live. They're they're not totally human, so they they have to live off planet. Mm -hmm. I've been shown several times. In fact, if, if I could share a hybrid story or two here, oh please um, do. Okay, well, my very first one I remembered is I was I was held, uh, presented with a baby, very very scrawny skinny baby, laid in my they laid him in my arms. And he, he looked, or I say he, I just think it was, uh, and he looked um, very, like, sickly and scrawny. And, but I had this nurturing feeling. Of, I felt the, the bond. And right when I started bonding with him and actually, um, you know, suckling as well, they said in their telepathic manner with uh, all the images and the pictures, they showed me how some people had... Um, uh, been given the baby and I dropped it or screamed or wouldn't touch it or different things like that and they said to me this is a, a success and so they were very happy that I accepted the child um, also another time I was shown a um, reptilian type of being um, and this was long after I'd had since 1989 I was having uh, experience with this uh, reptilian that would come in uh, take me on board a ship and different things like that now he never physically do I ever remember him touching me now is that a blocked memory I don't know but I've never remembered it but I do know on board the ship there was this little reptilian that was presented to me and I asked it was a human reptilian quite beautiful there's a picture of him um, kind of in a pod like thing you they, they can see that on on my website and uh, I said, well, who's the father? And they said, well, you call him Ayano and the all. Now, I knew when they said that, and they also showed me the images like they usually do, that the all means all the different genetics, not just reptilian and not just human, because you can't do that. You have to have different genetics mixed in there. So um, then one other time I was taken to a nursery where I seen all kinds of kids from this was uh, when I was um, just about 10 years, 15 years ago. And uh, there was kids from all ages, from adult down to, to children at that time. And they were in there, and I said, well, which one's mine? And they told me they all are. So that was like, I don't know, between 13 to 17 kids, something like that. I've also been told that other people saw me on board the ship and one of the other people were told that I have even more children than that. So I, I don't know. I don't even believe that number that she gave. But anyway, <laughs> I have a very large number. Mm -hmm. So okay. uh, the hybrid program is very big. And, and like I said, these are different types of ETs. When I saw these kids, some looked a little bit more, would you say, mammalian and human. Some looked more, uh, um, more just typical gray with the large heads some had dark skin red skin different colored skin and they were all different looking so 
there's a lot of groups doing the hybrid program. So it's uh, it's pretty wide scale. Yes. It's pretty wide scale. So uh, what I'd like to do at this point is I'd like to give you the floor to get out anything else that you'd like. Uh, and I'm not rushing you. Uh, okay. Whatever else you've got that you'd like to throw out there, uh, I want, I'd like you to go ahead and do it. And I want to thank you so much for your time tonight. Okay. Um, well, I'd first like to tell them about the groups again, if that's okay. Sure. Um, okay. Well, um, they can go to starseedawakening.org. Uh, they can go to my uh, Facebook. It's called Starseed Awakening, and it's in, on Facebook at Starseed Awakening e Extraterrestrial Contact Groups, and they can join those groups. Then from there, I'd love to have them come to the um, the individual private groups that I have on either Google, uh, ch uh, even Google Chat, I mean Hangout, or uh, Zoom Chat. And then they, I also have the Monarch group, which is uh, um, on, it's MKUltra, DID, My Lab, and Monarch. If you write that much out, you're going to get to the Facebook site. Love to have you join. These are only for people who have had these kinds of experiences it's a private group it's a smaller group the people really need to feel safe in there and know that there's not being infiltrated on uh, also I have the group that meets on Google Hangout on that and um, and then I have another group this is for anybody who feel like feels like um, they're waking up that they, they they've they've had sightings um, and and people who've had sightings if you've been close up on a ship You've been on it, and that's usually the rule of thumb. If you've been, if you've seen a ship and been close up, you've been on it. So, oh damn! I, <laughs> so if you've been close up on it, Michael, you've probably been on it. You just probably will need to do some more digging to find that out. <laughs> I have been close up, uh, and and I wasn't alone. My my wife uh, came out in time to see me running underneath this thing. So. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, Michael, I'd love to invite you to our Sunday group. It's uh, it's not at late at night. It's uh, earlier in the daytime, 1130. Come and join us, and, and you may just find out more information about your own experience. And I just it's might do that because I have actually freed up my next few Sundays, finally. So. Well, well, super. Yep, 1130. So just go on that uh, site, and uh, the Facebook site, and, uh, and join. There's events there that tell you about when it is and of course i'll send you a personal invitation so um let's see um it's really important to me these groups uh, the reason you know i ever started the groups uh back in uh, the uh 90 in 91 was an et an et group that i was having experience with i would go to these mufon groups and they would say to me um in my mind of course telepathic they'd say it'd be nice if you started a group now would you like to start a group they did talk to me and i went no 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 i'm shy i've been an introvert my whole life no thank you i don't want to do that so time after time they'd say the same thing to me i'd go to the mufon or i'd go to uh, the ufo contact center international which was an organization that i was facilitating they'd say to me that and so one night a gal got up and she was talking about how sad she was and she was alone and had no one to talk to and they said in a very firm voice it is now time to start your support group. So I realized it was time. So I stood up and and said, uh, I'm going to have a support group and meet me in the back of the room and we'll talk about it. And so that started the groups back in in uh, 91. And uh, they've been going since, except for I did have that break for like eight, almost nine years where um, I I wasn't completely free of the government. I know that. I've now found out that they continue to access me. I just didn't have memories of it. So I still have years, uh, you know, of not remembering anything along sure. with the marriage. And I can't remember jobs I, I know I worked at, but I don't remember the job. I, you know, it's on my record, but I have no memories. I have lots of blank spots. Someday I'd like to have most of those filled in, but not with the gory details, let's say. Yeah. But yeah. to learn learn more, you know, because when you have missing time in your life, you feel like you're, you did, like I can't remember my children's birth. You, it's you just really got cheated. It's uh, it's sad. I have two kids and I don't remember their births. So 
Yeah. I don't remember my graduation. I don't remember anything. So I'd like to know those things. Um, and I would, uh, if you have listeners out there that have other methods besides the one I use, I use a, you know, a multi-dimension, multi-dimensional um, sessions as well that I work help and help people with. Uh, they can connect with their um, their their ET families. Um, actually, I will tell you that um, I've been channeling for um, quite a few years. In the last couple of years, I started doing a galactic language channeling. Now, the ETs have, a, uh, I work with our, our hybrid group. Uh, they call themselves a consortium. And there's many different languages that come through, um, you know, through the channeling. And many people are getting, they get messages uh, from their, usually their, galactic families so I, I work with people that way I also do hypnotherapy um, I also am looking for methods myself to retrieve some of my own memories so if there's you know people out there that have other methods I'd uh, I'd be welcome to to find out about them yeah okay and and a uh, question from the chat uh, okay. is, is an orb with lights that spin be considered a craft? Outside or inside? Well, inside. yeah, this would, this would, I guess this would be outside. I, I, because you can't have them inside because there's little tiny crafts. Are too, they like drones? Know? Yeah, yes. There's, there, yeah, I mean, they can have, there's, there's beings that are even the size of, you know, your hand. They're small beings, you know. So there's people, I've seen orbs in the house and, um, orbs outside. Sure. Um, if if they're not the ones that you catch on camera, it some of those are even realistic. I mean, if you sometimes you can uh, blow those up and you can actually see faces and people in them, so it's possible they can be uh, ET I... orbs or ghost orbs. Oh, okay. Oh yes. Um, for people who are experiencers, a lot of the time it comes through the memories that they've had ghost encounters or things that go bump in the night and they always thought it was just ghosts or a haunted house or whatever but people who have had this et experience it's like a vortex opens up in your house and now everybody sees your light so you have different types of ets are interested in you you've got ghosts that are interested uh, that come towards the your light and so a lot of experience, in fact, majority of experiencers have uh, ghost activity as well. I see. And she says that it was transparent white orb, large outside, and it turned green. So, and it, so it was outside and it turned green. Well, that's not your normal orb. And so, yeah, I'd say it was definitely, it could have been a scout craft. They'd use the scout crafts, come off the ships with those scout crafts, and they're like just a one-man so if they just want to and, pick up some one person, they can take them. Does she have any missing time after? Um, that I'm not sure of. Um, well, not... she needs to take a look at that and see if she remembers everything after. Because if she didn't, and she just thinks, "Oh yeah, I saw the orb," and then, then it was gone. But huh. you, know, you know, you you know, there's a little missing time there. Then more than likely, she was picked up. I see. So, I mean, it's kind of, it freaks me out a little bit to think that, you know, you could be, they could pick you up and you not even know about it. And Oh, absolutely. You, I mean, wouldn't you, wouldn't, do people like have dreams? I mean, do you need a regression? Does it sometimes come back in people's dreams? I absolutely. Mean, really? Dreams are one of the methods that they start coming back. Well, come back in flashes in dreams. They'll come back in whole scenarios of dreams. People might be, um, <clears throat> think they're on some kind of a big old um, uh, mall. A mall is a favorite thing. It looks like you're in a mall because you can't see the ceiling and people will think that they're in a mall. And well, in actuality, they're in some kind of a big ship. Uh, people will have memories of being in really um, very uh, clean clean kind of rooms that uh, they're all white or they're, they're, they're round uh, or, or they might have a dream that they feel like they were walking but couldn't feel the floor. Well, there's all kinds of different dreams that bring back. In fact, one of my questionnaires, because I have questionnaires on my website and also, uh, you know, on my all my websites, you can uh, have all kinds of different 
dreams that uh, constitute the fact that you are having those experiences. So it's a way to, to wake up the memories. And then from there, you might have daytime dreams or daydreams. You might have um, just, you might be led to certain sites that you're supposed to uh, look at something that has to do with your experience or your synchronicities start happening and you're led to a, a support group or to a radio show. All these things are ways that you are waking up to your experience. Yeah, I, and you know, for me, I've had I've had plenty of experiences, and with the UFO, there was a time in my life where it's like I would watch the sky when I was a kid, and I'd wish I seen one, and it didn't happen until you know I got older, uh, and then it's happened a lot. I've seen these smaller craft that are kind of like scout vehicles that they use. Um, I've I've seen one of those, it, and I'll tell you what, it looked exactly like what you see on the Jetsons, except for you couldn't see through the glass bubble. I mean, it was all metallic, but I mean, it really looks like that. Some of them, they're right, yeah. right. So you're gonna wonder where they well, get this stuff from. <laughs> I think you better come to group for sure, because I think you're gonna find out some things about your experience. And I will tell you that the majority of the people who are not experiencers. Don't go looking at the stars all the time. They don't stand there thinking, "Oh, I wish I could see a ship." Uh, <laughs> they just don't. I so, I don't oh. go a night without looking at the sky. It's got to be cloudy for me not to bother. I mean, it's yes. I, I I'm fascinated by it. I could do it for hours, and I just I'm convinced that as soon as I look away, something's going to happen. So I'm always looking. Well, Michael, go to my questionnaire list on, the, on my website. I have uh, several questionnaires there, and check it out, and you will be probably surprised that out of those 50 questions, you probably hit on a lot of them that you didn't even think that you are an experiencer. Well, I will go definitely check that out. Um, uh, definitely I will. Uh, it's just, you know, when I was a kid, I had a couple out-of-body experiences, and I had somebody who was psychic that told me, you know, they told me about, didn't necessarily say that that's what happened to me, but told me about how sometimes these ET crafts, they'll come, they'll take, say, a child, and then they'll make, you know, the child will think that he's in his own bedroom, or she, in her own bed. Yes. And they give you that type of environment. And when they, she told me that, I says, you know, again, I was thinking, oh, hell, you know. <laughs> I've always <laughs> thought that I knew what it was. It was just an out-of-body experience, and I still think that. But with all these UFO sightings, you got to begin to wonder if, you know, more doesn't go on. Well, you do know there's different methods they, that they take you. They take you physically. They take you astrally. So um, you could have you could have definitely been taken astrally. They don't have to have your physical form. They can just come in just the same way they phase in and out of, uh, of their dimension. They can phase you in. In fact, I was taken through a window once. And I knew there was a window there, in fact, and I, I, I asked them, how did you take me through the window? And they said, well, we took you through a time when there was no window. Now, another time I was taken through a wall, and I, I know that I wasn't physical. Um, another time my kids saw me in the hall being levitated by a, a – there was a gray on each end of me, and I was levitated down the hall, and the being that had um, – they had woken up and seen was which were, I think was the Willow one was standing at the bunk bed and said don't telepathically don't worry we're not here for you and then my son saw this blue light out in the hall and he saw me being levitated out out uh, down the hall so there's uh, many methods and probably more than we don't even know of that they can do yeah I mean I remember uh, reading about a case uh, I think it was in uh, Alaska. It was in Alaska, and a police officer had pulled up into a, a driveway and witnessed uh, the craft in the sky and the beam going to the roof and a child actually being taken through the roof. I mean, didn't put a hole in the roof or any of that, just took the child right through the roof. And this is right. from a police officer. Right. Wow, that's an interesting one. I haven't heard that one. That's and that that's very true because they have a way of of making it you know taking our astral body so 
maybe we're still sleeping in bed and that's just our astral body you know yeah, I, well i, I, know, I in, know in my case i did see my body still laying there and and you know when i was a kid i didn't know i it spooked me out kind of so i asked my parents to switch rooms for me i, I wanted to go I was, go move into my brother's room so i did and it happened again and uh, only those two times though i don't remember it happening again after that but uh, it was free almost as if to say you could switch whatever room you want <laughs> <laughs> we'll find you yeah yes. 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 well that certainly does sound like it michael <laughs> well, well we'll see i mean i wish they don't have to make me forget you know i would be glad to sit at the table and have a coffee with them or something and uh, and interview one of them. <laughs> uh, yes. Well, you know, I asked once why uh, they didn't let me remember, and they said, well, it was it, they do it because they want us to be able to function in our life. If you knew you were being taken um, and in other ships, you've, you've seen other planets or you've looked back down on Earth, which I remember seeing, and you've experienced all these things, it'd be really hard to function in your day-to-day -day life. Yeah, I guess for, for most people, for me, it would just, it would, it would start <laughs> completing sentences for me, I think. <laughs> yeah, but as a child, you know, they were taken in terms as a child for me, why right. they hadn't told me. But yeah, as adult, I think there's a lot of us that are, you know, that are ready to know and, and experience it. And um, yeah. as long as, you know, the majority of the people get through that fear thing because there is that that we have to get through. For me, it's when every time I've had a, a close-up with, uh, with a craft or even one distant in the sky, I mean, it's an excitement for me. It's a, there's, there's this unknowing of it that, I don't know, you could call it fear, but I'm not afraid. I mean, if it landed out there, I would go right up to it. I'd, I couldn't help myself. I'd be drawn to it. I just, I mean, this might be the only chance I ever get. That's the way my mind would work. So if it kills me, it kills me. But ha ha, I told you they're real. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You know, there was a couple things I forgot. I wanted to tell people to, to tune in to my show on Saturdays at 12 o'clock um, at KCOR. And um, I have a lot of experiencers of both MK Ultra and, and stuff that I have on it. Also, they can reach me at Star Misha. That's uh, S T A R M I E S H A ninety nine at yahoo dot com. If somebody is an experiencer and wants to talk, and I really would love to have people come and and contact me, and I'd love to uh, have them come and join the group. All right, great. Well, uh, definitely on, on Facebook, uh, send me. Um Send me a, I don't know, send me something. Um, I will send you the link, uh, the invite to the Facebook that's group, it, yeah. and, right? And then the day of the event, I will send you a link to the, to the group. Because right. they're all private, so I'll send you the link. Great. Sounds great, uh, Misha. I, I, listen, I thank you so much for spending time with us tonight, and I, I hope that we'll do this again in the near future. Matter of fact, uh, next year is looking bright, so uh, maybe we could do this again. Oh, I'd love that. I'd love that. Thank you so much, Michael. It's been great. All right. Thank you, and have a great night. You too. All Good right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, everybody. Uh, she is linked up. That is Misha Johnston linked up on LateNightInTheMidlands.com, so you can go over there. She'll be linked up throughout the night uh, for several more hours uh, on, the, on the front page, and uh, then, of course, after that in the archive. So uh, feel free to... Um, Go to her website and, and definitely join the group. So um, I'm going to. Uh, why not? Personally, folks, I don't think I was abducted. I don't have any memory. I'm not, I mean, I know there's some people who just kind of go with it. And I, for me, I'm not sure. I just, for, it still seems like an out of body for me. But I have had a lot of UFO experiences. And I, I promise you, folks, I don't make it up. When I tell you I'm seeing something in the sky, I am. And as a matter of fact, I sent uh, Robert Morningstar those photos. There was five photos I sent him. And he's going to see what he can do about uh, bringing. Because honestly, this this craft does is not showing up you know, to the naked eye in the photo. But I know where it was. I mean, we know it's there. So hopefully he could 
pull it out. I don't know why that's happened. I mean, it's a cell phone, so that could be part of the problem. I don't know, but uh, just I've had some incredible sightings. And, and here's the thing. I haven't had a cell phone since... 2010 that helps because you know a lot of people i like what my guest said uh the electronic handcuffs you know you see everybody's hands together as their text 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 put that thing down like after this show put that thing down go outside even if it's cold so what put a coat on go outside and check out the stars and not for one minute or two minutes You know, go out there for maybe 15 minutes and then 20 minutes and then try to be out there for a half hour. Me, I'll I'll go out there and I'll spend an entire night. I mean, the the sun will start coming up. I mean, I love it. I'm drawn to it. And I want answers. And to get those answers, I think you need to have experience. So I've been having experience and, and I'm happy. You know what else, folks? I Something's been kind of weird around me lately. I've... I've seen, like, I don't know, you know, at the corner of your eye, people say they see shadow people and stuff. I tell you, lately, lately, I don't know if it's the ghost of Christmas or what the heck's going on here, but lately, I have, it's, I swear, like, it's happened a couple times during the show where I swear somebody is standing right here next to me and I look and they're not there now. Maybe I'm going crazy, I don't know. But uh, just weird stuff. Anyhow, folks, we'll be back tomorrow night with uh, my guest, my co-host, really, uh, my one of my partners in crime, Ryan Gable, will be joining me, and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be exploring symbols, uh, Masons, Illuminati, and so so much more tomorrow night here on Late Night in the Midlands. Folks, I thank you all for tuning in tonight, and I ask that you keep your eyes posted to the sky because you never know what you might see. Keep your ears posted to this broadcast because you never know what you might learn. And uh, for Ira and Jolene and all our moderators, I thank you all very much. Have a great night, everybody. We'll be back with you tomorrow night. Good night, everybody.